Pittsburgh Panthers landed in Ohio just 17 hours ago. In a few minutes, they go for their first 2-0 start since 1995. Pittsburgh football was haunted for much of the 90s, struggling with the ghosts of past glory. Now in the year 2000, they believe this could be the season. A chance to contend in the tough Big East football conference. But first, it's Coach Gary Blackney and the Bowling Green Falcons looking for another Mid-American ambush. Football is on the air, everybody, today from Bowling Green, Ohio. We're at Doit Perry Stadium as the Mid-American Conference Bowling Green Falcons play host to the Pittsburgh Panthers on a real hot and humid day here in Northwest Ohio. Hi again, everybody. Dave Sims along with Jeff Boston. Good to have you with us. In our game today, the Pitt Panthers still undecided on a number one quarterback, but whoever does get the job, boy, does he have a lot of toys. Got a lot of toys. There's no indecision about what Pitt's going to do with the ball. They're going to throw the ball, quality receivers. When you talk about receivers, you talk about Grimm and Bryant, probably the most dynamic receiving duo in the country. You see last year's numbers, 126 catches, 2,000 yards, 10 TDs. Antonio Bryant not in the game last week. They really missed him, right? Uh-uh. R.J. English, two catches, 128 yards, a touchdown. On the other side of the ball, Lamar Slade with two touchdowns. Pitt's going to Pitt's gonna throw the ball. They're going to take it deep. Big challenge for the Bowling Green defense. Pitt coming off a win against Kent last week. Meanwhile, Bowling Green lost at Michigan 42-7, but not as bad as the score would indicate. They were impressed by a lot of things, particularly their quarterback, Andy Song. Their quarterback played very well at Michigan. The one thing they're going to have to do this afternoon, they're going to have to run the ball. You see uh, Psalm's numbers from last week, 16 for 36, 188. The one thing, Dave, a lot of drops. They're going to have to be able to run the ball more efficiently, and they're going to have to have the decision process that this young man possesses to be in this game. Pittsburgh goes for win number two in this young season. Can Bowling Green pull up another upset for the mat? Kickoff is coming up. The first will join Mike Gleason in the AT&T Big East studio for a look around the Big East right after this. Zero fire you, stranger. Dial 1 800. Call ATT. And you can save big bucks. All you have to do is dial right down the center. Aim right down the center. What? Hey, who it is? C A L L A T T. It's always the same low rate. It's great, right? Ah! Copy. Collect. So call. You hit it! I did it! For the same low rate, every minute, everywhere. Dial 1 800. Call ATT for collect calls. Hi, everybody. Welcome back to the AT&T Big East Studios. I'm Mike Gleason. It's great to have you on board again. Heading into week two of the season, six of the seven conference teams in action are on the road this week. Among those schools traveling into hostile territory is Boston College. The Eagles trying to rebound from a disappointing loss to West Virginia, where they turned it over three times in the first half. This week, Tom O'Brien takes his team to West Point to battle Army. Another action this weekend, Miami travels to Washington. More on this big matchup coming up at halftime. D. Brown and the Syracuse Orangemen head to the Queen City to take on Cincinnati. Rutgers quarterback Mike McMahon tries to keep his hot hand as the Scarlet Knights face Buffalo. And the Temple Owls, coming off their first opening game victory since 1996, head to Maryland to face the Terrapins. 
Thursday night, ninth-ranked Virginia Tech showcased their great special teams again. Corey Bird returned a block punt nine yards, and Andre Davis brought back a punt 87 yards as the Hokies open up a 31-0 lead and coasted to a 45-28 victory over East Carolina. But Keith Grimm and the Pittsburgh Panthers are ready to tee it up at Bowling Green. Don't forget to join us at halftime here in the AT&T Big East studio for scores and highlights from around the country. Hey, Steve. Throw me a Miller Lite. Throw me a Miller Lite. Stop to the remote. Hey, peanuts. Oh. Grab the unbreakable plastic bottle from Miller Lite. I'm such a klutz. I'm Dan. It's Miller time. I'm okay! Hey there, time for a holiday. So switch off your computers and take a national holiday with National Car Rental. Spend some time with National Heroes. Or visit a national treasure. Or join the National Football League. But wherever you go, let National Car Rental get you there fast. With special low rates on minivans for only $229.99 per week nationwide. Or only $289.99 per week in New York. National Car Rental, what are you waiting for? Let's go! No other weekly financial publication moves the markets like Barron's. It provides the knowledge, insight, and foresight that allow you to stay one step ahead. Subscribe now and you'll also receive this Barron Stock Evaluator free. It lets your computer help you turn money into wealth. Get 13 weeks of Barron's and the Stock Evaluator all for only $39. Call now, toll free, 800-334-6600. That's 800-334-6600. We are ready for action. The Pittsburgh Panthers taking on the Bowling Green. Another meeting of the Big East and the MAC. And deep to receive, Joe Alls to receive for the Bowling Green Falcons. 5'10", 190-pound sophomore. Nick Locks has got the game underway. Alls has got it at his goal line. To the 10 and swarmed down there at the 12-yard line. Nice coverage by the Pittsburgh Panthers. And let's welcome back to our broadcast team, John Sanders. David, thank you very much. And five of the six players who were suspended last week by the University of Pittsburgh will be in uniform here this afternoon. That includes Antonio Bryant, the outstanding sophomore wide receiver who teamed up so well with Latif Grimm last year. But missing again this week is the hard-hitting free safety Ramon Walker in the wake of the school's investigation for the use of unauthorized university phone access codes. He did not make the trip to Bowling Green. He is practicing with the team and he will play for Pittsburgh next week when they host Penn State. That's the story from down here. Talk to you later, David. All right, John, thank you very much. First and 10 for the Falcons and a penalty flag already as all as they takes off around the right end, gets up to about the 17-yard line. Flag on the first play from scrimmage. Our referee today is Stan Evans. Running down here. Here's a look at Stan and uh, legal motion in the backfield. Legal shift. Starting lineups for Bowling Green. Joe Alls, their top running back a year ago with just under 600 yards, scored four TDs. Aaron Alexander from Kokomo, Indiana. Last year made 35 catches. He had one catch last week against Michigan. And on that offensive line, their most experienced player by far is Rob Fairman making his 35th start. Penalty was against Bowling Green. They'll back it up inside the 10. Inside the 5, rather. Check that from our vantage point. That is inside the 10. Man in motion is Bautista. And not much doing on the run game there. Great coverage by the Pittsburgh Panthers. Brian Knight, number 57. Number 58 is Ryan Smith. And Mike White looked for him on the inside of walk-on. Transfer from Indiana University of Pennsylvania has since earned a scholarship. A mere pure for it. Loves to hit. Shares that middle linebacker spot with Ryan Gonzalez. And in the secondary, a couple of youngsters, Shante Spencer and Tutu Ferguson. They will have a big chore today. Ferguson, a freshman. And Saab falls down in the end zone. Is it a safety? Let's see. They're going to say he slipped. It looked like he may have tripped over 
leg of a lineman. And the referee and his staff, Stan Evans and company, trying to get things sorted out. A legal procedure. Bad start for Gary Blackney's ball club. And Gary, on this hot and humid day, wearing a shirt and tie. So when he started out in his career, he asked his kids, you know, how should I go to work? They said shirt and tie. Well, let's see how long he stays in it. Last week at Michigan, brutally hot, 110,000 people. Sometimes you have to overrule your children. That's exactly <laughs> right. He comes out in the second half with a golf shirt. Yeah. Interesting man right here. Uh, been at this program for 10 years. Talking about a quality man. Not only about football teaching, but teaching these kids something for life. Get him back! Get him back! So his offensive unit is really backed up inside the one. And Sam gets a little bit of breathing room, so they'll be able to punt it away. But not the start they were looking for here at Bowling Green. Bowling Green against the Big East all-time is 3-6. and six. They lost to Pittsburgh last year in the opener for both. 3-1 and one against Temple, 0-2 oh against, against West Virginia, and 0-2 oh against Virginia Tech. Conversely, Pittsburgh is 15-0 and oh against the Mid-American Conference. Time for the punter. Pat Fleming making his debut. He was sick last week, had an inner ear infection. Ricky Schneider, the backup quarterback, did a great job averaging about 40 yards per kick. Tim Stein from his 41. Boy, Pitt is going to be in great shape. He's driven back to the 36-yard line, but a 41-yard punt by Pat Fleming. When we come back, Pittsburgh's going to have the ball and real good possession. Got a flag on the play, yet another one. Very sloppy start to the beginning of this game. And it's something if you talk to the uh, Bowling Green staff, not at all last week going to the big house, 110,000 people. Yeah, they tell, all the coaches talked about the poise that the ball club showed, and already, what do we got, three, four penalties already, this on a personal foul. And you don't like it when your offense comes out the first series and loses 10 yards. We'll take a timeout when we come back. Pittsburgh's going to be in marvelous field uh, position inside the 20-yard line of Bowling Green. Yeah. All righty. Looks like a lot more mates are coming by. back when we have a little dinner get together we try to make sure it's an experience mates will go away talking about outback steakhouse no rules just right which house was this i don't know you know when you apply for a loan in today's economy it's nice to have the confidence that your credit is good especially when you need a new home car or other essential but sometimes inaccuracies do appear in your credit report and that's why it's so important to stay on top of your credit by checking your report from time to time now it's easy and it's free to get a free copy of your credit report simply log on to freecreditreport.com act now get your free credit report by logging on to freecreditreport.com today into an Olympic edition Regal. Looks like I got the gold. <laughs> now save $1,250 on the Olympic edition Regal for a limited time at your Buick dealer. <laughs> you ready? Turtle Wax. Grizzly Grill Guards. Rancho Shocks. gas cans. Advanced Auto Parts carries more parts than any other store, including one you won't find anywhere else. We need some help. We need a lot of help. Advanced Auto Parts. The best part is our people. Pittsburgh Panthers, you can't believe the shape they're in right now. The 19-yard line after this play, and it was a bonehead play. Kerry Campbell, number two for Bowling Green. This is something you simply don't do. Pushing a guy in the back, you, you penalize your team inside the 20-yard line. Here we go, first and 10, Priestley, the crash. He takes it down inside the 
15 to about the 11-yard line. So Antonio Bryant, they welcome him back to action with the first play of the game. Kevin Barlow, outstanding as a running back, all Big East by the coaches last year, 106 yards last week against Kent. Latif Grimm, an All-American candidate, caught one ball against Bowling Green last year, looking for more this year. And on that offensive line, Jeff McCurley holds it together. He's athletic, tough, smart, and gotten a lot bigger since he's been at Pittsburgh. Second down play, second and about three. Barlow, the lone setback. He'll get the call, down he goes. Fine play, the penetration outstanding by Carl Rose, a quarterback for Bowling Green. Carla Jr. out of Columbus, Ohio. Here's a look at the Bowling Green defensive front. D.J. Durkin out of Boardman, Ohio. Second straight year as one of the co-captains. Got a sack last week. Chris Della Vella, seven tackles against Michigan. One of the leads, one of the best linebacking court in the MAC. And Chad Long, he's a good one as well. He's the strong safety from Clyde, Ohio. With ten tackles last week, eight solo against Michigan. Third down play, Grizzly going to throw over the middle, wide open. It's the tight end, first and goal for the Pittsburgh Panthers. The Panthers are inside the five. There is a penalty flag on the play. They get it to Brennan Carroll. Pittsburgh has a bunch of tight ends, led by Mike Bosnick and Chris Wilson. Boy, not the... The way you want to get a ball game started here. Referee getting more uh, camera time than the uh, quarterback. And this is a big, big penalty against the Pittsburgh offense. And you talk about emotional swings early in this football game. The Bowling Green defense put in horrible field position by their offense and the punting squad. You capitalize on this. Uh, if you're Pittsburgh, you say, well, we started the game just as we wanted to. If they don't come away with a touchdown, you have to believe this is demoralizing to the Pitt offense. You see Walt Harris and his record, 1997 Big East Coach of the Year, on the verge of really turning this program around, and he's very concerned, cautiously concerned about this game this afternoon. Well, he is definitely disappointed right now. They get the ball inside the five-yard line on the catch by Carroll. If you're bowling green right here, do not blitz. Double the wide receivers, give them six or eight yards, let them kick a field goal. There we go. This is what they did last week, 50% on third down conversion. They don't blitz. Firstly, throws outside. The receiver broke it inside. Grim. So an incompletion, and that will bring on the field goal team. And, and already, whether he makes it or not, that's an emotional victory for Bowling Green. It's an emotional victory. One thing you've got to realize, Pitt is used to playing on the AstroTurf. You see Grimm lose his footing. Natural grass. We ran on this field. We got a good workout in here at Bowling Green yesterday afternoon. Nice, soft, cushiony grass. The Pitt offense is not used to performing on grass. Nick Lott off to a good start. Three for three against Kent in the 30-7 to win by Pittsburgh last week. This is a 36-yard attempt. His longest last week was a 30. Tim Stein out of the hold. Low line drive is good. So the Panthers get a three spot out of their first possession. They should have gotten seven, but they have three on the board. We'll take a timeout, come back to Bowling Green. Pittsburgh Panthers with a three nothing lead here at Bowling Green. In a world where a collect call can cost you dearly, two warriors show the way. 1-800-CALL-ATT presents Diet Dragons. The rates are low, but the action sky high with 1-800-CALL-ATT. I'm very clever, but perhaps you forgot. Light of the mongoose. You'll laugh, you'll cry, you'll dial. 1-800-C-A-L-L-E-T-T. You have saved big bucks, my son. The student has become the teacher. 1-800-CALL-A-T-T. At phones everywhere.
That's nice. Well, my game needs a heck of a lot of work, but I wouldn't mind getting a workout after this game. Here. And the guy behind the tree just three putted. <laughs> sure, he's not laughing. Here's lots of the kickoff. Joe Alls again will get it this time from the two. Behind the wall, pick coverage. Good again, this time to the 19-yard line, where he's brought down there, Tory Cox and number 47, Brian Guzik. Let's go down to John Sanders. David, one of the 17 players from Ohio on the Pittsburgh team has just scored the first Panther points of this afternoon. One of them, of course, is Nick Lotz. He's from just down the road in Finley, Ohio. That's about 20 miles away down I-75. As a matter of fact, his mom and his dad graduated from Bowling Green. I asked him before the game why he didn't go to Bowling Green. He said, hey, I had to get away from home. Decided to go to Pennsylvania. Kick for the University of Pittsburgh. By the way, one of the Pitt assistants, Bob Lig Ligaszewski, was nine years an assistant at Bowling Green State. Most recently, he was their assistant head coach. All right, John, thank you very much. Swing pass outside. They get it on the edge to Alls, and he gets it across the 25 to the 26-yard line. Joe Alls, career high, 155 yards on 25 carries against Ball State last year. Working off a hip pointer. Didn't run real well last week, Jeff. Four carries, eight yards. With you know what? It's amazing. Nine. When you don't run well, you don't block well. <laughs> yeah. It's amazing how those things work hand in hand. Andy Sum, big guy, six foot six. Hands off to Alls. Good penetration by Pure for number nine to stop that play. And we've come up with a new new word in the year 2000 that uh, our producer, Scott Matthews, a bell cow. Okay, everybody that's been around football for most of their life knows what a bell cow is. Purifoy is the bell cow for this defense. Seven tackles last week, a leader. And we asked our defensive coordinator, Paul Rhodes, is there one guy that will get in anybody's face? He goes, yeah, Purifoy, instantly. He gets the start. Third down five situation for Andy Sam and Bowling Green. A little sprint out action, stop throws. Anybody home? No. Tried to get it to number 18, David Bautista. Pretty good coverage by the Pitt Panthers. So a three and out for Bowling Green. Gary Blackney wanted to get things going offensively, establish that run game. Offensively, they wanted to run the ball, control the clock, get their big play wide receivers, give them an opportunity, but so far it hasn't happened. Fleming, his first punt, 41 yards. Oh, man, he shanked the heck out of this. Takes a Pittsburgh bounce back to the 40. You cannot beat the field position Pitt has had in this ball game. A 15-yard punt by Fleming. Pitt again in great shape. Back with more action in a moment. This is a weird one. Guy's got a metal plate in his head. Now he's picking up radio signals on it. Having a few friends over. A home run by Jones. Grab a Miller Lite. It's Miller time. This is a weird one. This guy's got cable. Today's Big East football game is brought to you by 1-800-CALL-ATT for collect call. Buick, isn't it time for a real car? And by National Car Rental. What are you waiting for? 
Let's go. Good look at Walt Harris. And he is trying to find somebody to be his steady quarterback. Will it be Terman? Will it be Priestley? And this is what he has done in season openers. Not real well in game two. This drive from the 40-yard line. First drive started at the Bowling Green 19. 3 nothing Pittsburgh. Barlow, let's see how long they can hammer him. He picks up a couple off the right guard. Running behind Brian Anderson. And of all the things that happened last week to Bowling Green in Michigan, the one thing I was impressed with for three quarters of that football game, Dave, Tim Beckman, the defensive coordinator, his ability to stop the run. And when we talked to him yesterday, what's job one? We have to stop Kevin Barlow. The bad part of this is you've got Graham, Bryant, English. I mean, can we keep going on Slade? This is a very talented team throwing the ball with wide receivers. Only oh, yeah, a gain of a yard now in the eye on this second down play. Priestley. Out to Bryant, his second catch today. Grim, nice block. Picked up about three, four more yards. But again, another example of good downfield blocking by the wide receivers. We mentioned last week that the best team we had seen last year was Navy with their wideouts throwing downfield. And the one thing that's evident, look at the amount of space that the Bowling Green corners are giving these receivers. That spells one word, respect. Good job of closing the ground. They held this to about a three-yard gain, third down and six. Good look at uh, Alan Simonson, linebacker's coach for Bowling Green. Third down and six for the Panthers. That's English in motion. All kinds of movement. Heck, the quarterback move. Take your pick on this one. Look at all the guys in the striped shirt. They all get together and try and decide this. Certainly the Bowling Green defensive unit looks a little bit more energized after this one. And if you're Walt Harris, you can't be happy. You can't be happy with the way your offense has performed. Watch your quarterback. Watch your quarterback. Whoa. Hey, coach. Hey. Mr. Something McCurley snapped it to himself. Yep. That's a no-no. It's a no-no. Sometimes you forget, you know, as you're thinking ahead to assignments, you forget that count. English in motion, third down and long here for Pittsburgh. They've got a three-nothing lead. Priestley gonna throw, decent protection. Sideline ball, catch made over there at the Bowling Green sideline by Latif Grimm. And you're talking about knowing where the first down markers are. You talk about a veteran receiver, Latif Grimm. He's got this first down by about a half of yard. You know, we talked yesterday. Latif Grimm, so much has been made about he and Antonio Bryant. Best duo in the country for what? And you know, he runs a 4640. Not the fastest guy on the field. Very precise route. He knew it too. Styles too. He's got the wristbands. Oh, you know, that's, that's part of the game. I'll guarantee you the shoes are spatted. Oh, absolutely. He's got the wristbands right below the knee as well. Look at that. There you go. Oh, there you go. You've got to have the total package. Heavy styles here on this first down at the 29. Barlow. Stutter step. It cost him. Nice play in the backfield. Chris Glances. 6'4", redshirt junior out of Mentor, Ohio. And this is what we saw in the film last week at Michigan. Michigan only had 40-something yards by the first half. Penetration is the big key. Glances in the backfield, also playing with his brother Alex. That was one big thing. I was fortunate enough to play beside my brother for three years at Clemson, and uh, Latif Grimm leaving the field with a sprained ankle. There's Chris. Brother Alex, how big is high school football in the state of Ohio? Oh, how much? We only have a couple hours. Man, is it huge. Look at the cushion by the cornerback. Second and 15 draw, Barlow looking for some place. Found a little bit of a crack. Bowling Green has recovered. Number 30 on the recover, the cornerback, Michael Malone. So the first big turnover of the contest it's a stingy looking Bowling Green defensive unit. They've had their backs against their end zone twice now, giving up just the three spot. You saw the concern in Walt Harris's face. What a tremendous move by Barlow stepping over. And watch right there. Just get your hand on the football. Barlow's looking for it. Number 30, Mike Malone recovering this thing. Yeah, he stripped it too. If you're the Bowling Green defense, you would kind of like at some point that your offense would kick in and contribute. Yeah. They walk up the field, it's two for us, none for you. 
<laughs> what have you done for me lately? A little sprint formation here for Andy Som. Sprint draw left side. Joe All drew a crowd. Take a penalty flag as well. It's like in baseball, these guys are going to have to adjust to what the refs are calling. This is Big East football. Glad you are with us. We're at Doit R. Perry Stadium, Bowling Green, Ohio. Big East against the MAC Conference once again. I'm Dave Sims with Jeff Bostic. John Sanders back with us this week. Last week, of course, the big, big story of the Mid-American Conference, Toledo just dominating Penn State at Penn State. Once again, an illegal procedure. And Bowling Green's offense right now, so young, so inexperienced up front, they cannot make these type of mistakes. They can't recover from first and 15 all afternoon. That's right. Furman, the senior, but then you go sophomore, 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 junior. Bautista in motion. First and 15. They'll try to run right side. And that's not happening. Oh, what a play. Number 51. The bullet was Gerald Hayes. Did he fill that hole or what? He delivered the blow and stopped the play cold. Maybe a gain of a yard. Maybe. Talking to Walt Harris yesterday, the strength of this defensive squad is the linebacking core. This guy, Gerald Hayes, shot out of a rocket. And this is what you want to do, young people. When you're tackling somebody, drive them back to their side of the football. Perfect form tackle. Did you see how he kept his pad position inside? That was outstanding. That was right out of the You know what? Edit this tape and put it on a clinic. That's how you tackle. Well, Walt Harris calls him a star. No question about that. Tell you what, just massive confusion here in this start. Very shaky. Some barely got back to the line of scrimmage. He called a T.O. Andy... Uh, Check that Gary uh, Blackney really needs this ball game. Played on the road last week. This is the home opener. Then they're on the road for the next four weeks. And he's had five straight losing seasons after you know, coming out of the, uh, the gates in great shape back in 91-92. Wins the MAC Conference. They go 36-8-2. But since then, 22-33. and 33. You see his record. He told us yesterday he went from being a hot coach to being on the hot seat. Yes. <laughs> some of, yeah, that's what some of the preseason publications says. Well, I don't read all of them, but my kids told me about it. His kids told him. And, and you know what? The only time we've ever been in a school that has not only a, a male mascot, but the female mascot. I like that. So, yeah, I think you're right. Of all the places we've been, yeah. You're talking about an offense that can sincerely use a first down and some type of momentum. Oh, you're looking at them. Uh, this is at uh, Bowling Green's deepest penetration, Earl 25, right? That's not a good step. They want to. <laughs> they're not going to want to hang their hat on that. They're going to wear the grass out on this one in the field. People at the other end of the stands are going to get ticked off. Second down, 16, offset eye. Time to throw outside, drop. Just like last week, a lot of drops. This one went to number 85. He could not hold on to it. Number 85 is Joe Fisher, one of their backup wide receivers. Keep in mind, Kurt Gerling, they lost him last week out with a broken right collarbone. He's going to sit for four weeks. He's an outstanding receiver, made six catches a week ago. Bowling Green now, 0 for 2 on third down. Do it out of the shotgun. Decent pressure. Sam's going to run. Throws on the run. That's going to be picked. It is right there. And Pittsburgh takes over. Can't make an easier pick than that one for Shantae Spencer, the freshman out of Woodland Hills High School in Pittsburgh. All WPIAL last year. Former uh, quarterback back in his senior year. So Andy Som gets picked off for the first time this season. How about Shantae Spencer? Two college games, two interceptions. Young man from Woodland Hills High School, teammate of William Tutu Ferguson. Their, their fullback also went to the same high school. I was asking their coaches, I said, they must have had a pretty good high school team. 13-0 last year. Thank you very much. And we talked about the poise and the decision-making of Andy Som. This is a football he'd like to have back. Tried to get it to his tight end, Russ Durham. So Pittsfield position, not too bad here either. They're on 42. Blitz, he picked up. 
Priestley got drilled. He had time. He was trying to load up. Bryant was in double coverage, but he's going to try to get it to him anyway. And he's hurt. Yes, he is, because that linebacker, get the name of that one. That was a great play. It was Glantis again. Check that. It was uh, DJ Durkin. And watch him unload here. And the Pittsburgh offense is very fortunate. Their left tackle moved early. He's talking about moving. Watch this. Ooh. Brandon Hicks right in the middle. We're going to put the helmet between the ones. Bullseye. Hicks with a sack last week. This spring with Mono. He's back refreshed now. Only a loss of a couple. Nick Goins, his first carry. Nice run by the former Ohio State star. And a loose ball again. We got a loose ball. And Bowling Green has recovered. They were stripping at Goins as he was fighting for extra yardage. And that'll be the second fumble on the afternoon by the Pittsburgh Panthers. And you have to wonder, is Goings in because of the earlier fumble by Barlow? Nick Goings, a transfer from Ohio State, loses possession of the football. The officials are talking. This is not a good sign. Yep. It is a fumble recovery for the Bowling Green squad. Offense, if you're Bowling Green, come in and do something with this field position. That room to breathe now on the offensive end. And they caught him in a blitz. Going's a kid that I like. The one thing about being a running back, if you start with the ball, finish with the ball. Number 90, Ryan Wingrove is able to recover this thing. And you talk about the key, these two squads met in 1999. Pittsburgh with a 30 to 10 win. Bowling Green turned the ball over that afternoon five times. Well, are we seeing a reverse of that pattern this year? Could be. Andy Saab with some room to play with now. He's right at midfield. Going to throw. Looking sideline. Bautista down there. Makes the catch. Inside the 20-yard line. First down, Bowling Green. 34 yards on the pickup. And with Kurt Gerling out of the lineup, somebody needs to step up for this Bowling Green offense as wide receiver Batista transfer from Cerritos Junior College in Norwalk, California. A good job of coming back to the football. The ball was somewhat underthrown. You talk about being able to play against Pittsburgh last year. There's momentum there. They have confidence that they can be successful against this squad. First and 10 for Bowling Green at the Pittsburgh 16-yard line. In motion is Andre Pinchin. Straight up the middle. On his first carry is John Gibson. John, a junior out of Columbus, Ohio, Beechcroft High School. They list him at 5'10", 220. Had seven carries for 28 yards last week against Michigan, one of their the premier short yardage people. 5'10 normally means 5'8 and a half. And I, I think that's what I would be buying right now. Joe Hall's back in the game. You saw the running back coach telling him, use your eyes. Brian Jenkins, the running back coach for Bowling Green. Sam looks left side. Throw, secondary receiver tried to get it to Ross Durham. He's looking for one of the wide outs out there. Durham, the tight end released, and he overthrew him. And the pressure early by number 58, Ryan Smith, the young guy that's really emerged, had a tremendous spring, really came on in the fall. When we talk about how young the Bowling Green offensive line is, well, this, this Pittsburgh defense equally is young. Sound two of six for 40 yards to this point. And an interception. Looking to heat up, you've got uh, Godfrey Lewis just came into the game at running back. 5'9", 190 from Toronto, Ontario, Canada. Here's the deep setback. Sam has Andre Pynchon to his left, and now he calls another timeout. So that's two down, one to go. And Pittsburgh must be throwing some looks in there. He's got his his playbook on the uh, on the wrist. I love this as a, as a former player. When you look at a quarterback that's got his playbook on that big armband, what happens during the course of the game? If you take a guy like Howie Long or Al Zato, one of those guys would have ripped that oh, thing off. Absolutely. How do you play the rest of the game? Yeah. Do you have a backup armband? That's so true. Let's take a look at what the Pittsburgh defense has done to this point. Right now, the Pitt Panthers, they are fourth in defense 
in the Big East on that pick there, Shante Spencer. Stopping the previous drive, but, drive, but right now the uh, Panthers got some work to do. And the Panthers are a squad that's trying to get back to national prominence. When you look back in the mid-70s and early 80s, I'm going to promise you, the 1980-81 squad that the Panthers had, as good as anybody in the country, maybe as good as anybody the college has ever seen. 19 guys off of that team got tryouts with the NFL. 14 of them made it. Some big-time names. And a lot of them had big impacts, no doubt about it. Out of the spread formation, pinch them in motion. Third down, eight. Ball at the 14-yard line. Swing it outside. Bautista. And a penalty flag on the play. Ponco came up to slow him down. But Batista with another catch. We may have a holding penalty on number 12, Aaron Alexander, the wide receiver from Bowling Green. And number 34, Brandon Williams. We have seen way too many flags. Holding, good call, Jeff. So that will back the Falcons up. And nobody feels worse than this young man right now. He's standing in the huddle. And you know what? His team, watch his left arm. Oh, yeah. Right there. Right. Let go. There's an arc to holding. Uh, I, per I perfected it. But there is an <laughs> arc to holding. And that is not the... I'm going to have to take... After at halftime, I'm going to go down and teach this young man how to block in the open field. I think the key phrase would be subtlety. Hold it, let it go. Hold it, let it go. You know, if the official's on your outside, use your inside hand. Okay, there you go. Find out where they are. You got a feel. He will get more experience. Just a red shirt junior. Heck of a pass catcher is out Aaron Alexander. Third and 14. I'd be curious to see what Sam does here. He's got wide side of the field to his right. Well, this is a perfect opportunity to run a draw play. Well, do it out of the gun with the running back, Godfrey Lewis. Sprint out right side. Throws. Got somebody home. No. Covering for Pittsburgh. How about big Mike White? He, he runs right out of his shoe. Mike White, number 97, the defensive tackle. You have to be impressed with what you see from the Pittsburgh defense. 51, Gerald Hayes applying the pressure. And making something good out of a bad situation. Their offense turns the football over. They hold them to a field goal attempt. 38-yard attempt here by Mike Knapp. He missed his only attempt last week at Michigan from 34. He did make his only PAT. 38 yards. Left hatch. All the hold. Check that sound the hold. And the field goal is good. So we got a tie ball game here at Bowling Green. The Falcons taking advantage of a Pittsburgh turnover, and they convert it into some points to tie the game at three. Let's send it back to our AT&T Big East studios with uh, Mike Gleason and a look at the Army BC game. Mike? Well, Dave, BC trying to snap that three-game skid, which dates back to last season, of course. Army grabbed the 7-0 lead, but then William Green returned 185 yards, setting up the eight-yard run by Cedric Washington. And that was the equalizer for Boston College. Right now, 7-7, 4.50 to go. Now it's 13-7. BC just scored as we're speaking. Happy Valley, Penn State fell behind 7-0 to Louisiana Tech. Now Eric McCoo with a couple of touchdowns. Lions up 20-7. Let's go back to Bowling Green now with Dave and Jeff. Defensive player of the week. And they're, they're very active, good size. They come up and get involved in the running game a lot. And the way today's going, they're... Yorder ties the score at three. I would not have wanted to be a Nittany Lion this past week at practice. Oh my goodness, are you kidding me? That is the last place you want to... Hello, Mama. Yeah, we got an appointment. You need me home? Uh, I'll be... Uh, <laughs> yeah, I'll be right on the plane. You know, that's when your hamstring's a little bit tight. You've got vertigo. All those bad things that happen, that's when you want to have it is that week. Nick Goings is deep. He'll try to make amends for that fumble. Look out. Good coverage by Bowling Green. Was that English on the return? I believe it was. R.J. English on that return. And a nice tackle down there by Jerry Wagner, number 37. Let's go back downstairs to John Sanders. We're going to see a new quarterback for the University of Pittsburgh on this offensive series. And also Latif Grimm during that defensive stand by Pittsburgh. He was working on his right ankle. Taped it up himself a little bit after the trainers taped it. And there was a meeting, of course, between Harris, Grimm, and the new quarterback, Terman, trying to get this offense of Pittsburgh going. John, thank you. And you can see why Walt Harris 
has not, at least to this point, established one quarterback. Now it's John Terman's turn. Boy, Bruce Lee couldn't have asked for better field position. Now Terman comes in. He'll start from his own 22. He'll throw. Chase from behind. Glancis is there. Throws it up in the air. Throws it out of bounds. And that is not grounding because he was outside the tackles there. One of the new rules in college football this year. Thank you very much. Saved his legs, saved possession too. <laughs> Good job by the Bowling Green defense. Man-to-man -man yeah, coverage. This is not the type of decision that if you're Walt Harris sitting on that sideline that you won't exactly see from Terman's first play. Yep. Another, another penalty. Well, Walt couldn't make decisions on uh, picking a number one because this is what, this is what happened last week. It's an election year, and they say that this year's presidential election is, is dead heat. <laughs> it's not any closer than this one, believe me. And the key last week, Priestley nor Terman had an interception. No turnovers, three touchdown passes. So a 3-3 ball game. Mike Knapp's first career field goal, six play, one minute, 29 yards on a 30-yard drive for Bowling Green. First and 10 from the 32, Terman. Deep sideline, got some separation. Baxter, he dropped it again. We saw him do it last year. At Rutgers, he was in the open on several occasions, had the ball, put it away, and then dropped it. Boy, that could have been a game breaker for Pittsburgh. Antonio Bryan, a young wide receiver, freshman All-American a year ago. He had four or five steps on Mike Malone. We talked about we didn't like what we saw from Terman the first pass. Oh, my goodness. Boy, he, he was neck and neck with the uh, defender and then separated when he saw the ball. Tremendous throw by your quarterback right there. Boy, that's a heartbreaker. Keep it on the ground to no avail. Good penetration. Torrey Cox with the carry. But he had nowhere to run. Good coverage inside. Chris Hainline, number 50, was there for Bowling Green. You know, when you talk about Bowling Green, their defense is obviously the thing that stands out. The one thing that I was impressed with, meeting with their defensive coordinator, Tim Beckman, yesterday, young, energetic, good, this guy's going to be a head coach next year, folks. If you're a football team that's struggling and you want a young, energetic uh, football coach, Tim Beckman, right here. Third down, 10. Ball up the 32-yard line. Turn it. Down he goes, sacked by Carl Rose. Like a bullet, untouched. So now things picking up here for Bowling Green. They brought what we call a corner cat. Unblocked, easy to make the tackle, number, Carl, number three, Carl Rose. And you know what? When you make it, look, cornerbacks, they don't make very many sacks. They don't know how to react. At least they're not doing that Gastineau sack dance. Yeah. Oh, God, that's to drive me crazy. Yeah, it was. Yeah. That, you know, the first couple of times that was all right, but, the, you know, when you got into triple figures, that got to be a little bit much. That's a great punt. Great punt there. And breaking the tackle. Inside the 30-yard line, that's Chad Long. But a terrific punt. For Pittsburgh, Jay Junko really nuked that one out of Upper St. Clair, Pennsylvania. That punt carried 51 yards. Let's take a look at the Volkswagen Big East leaders. And here we go with Pittsburgh. Passing game, that's what they did last year. They led the Big East second time in three years that happened. 3-3 three, three ball game. Late stages, first quarter. Bowling Green back with the ball. Somme out of the shotgun. Draw. Joe Alls trips. Actually brought down by number 57 in there, Brian Knight. Not too much trickery there. And you look at Bowling Green's offensive line. They are young, but they're extremely big, Dave. 300 pounds, 303, 280, 285, 290. The one thing they are not, very quick. And with inexperience, the one thing is an offensive lineman. You have to look at continuity. You see that uh, Rob Furman, their left uh, defense, uh, left offensive tackle, 35 career starts. The rest of the line, only 23. It's called growing pains. Yes, indeed. 
Second down and 10. Sam, nice play action. Got some time on the roll. Throws and gets it to Alexander for the catch. And he's got the first down by about two yards. And now they're going to say caught it out of bounds. So the field judge saying that the receiver was out of bounds. William Simons. Watch the bottom of your screen. Oh, my goodness. Looks like we missed one there. Now, you know what? It's not a real popular call here in Bowling Green. And they have a replay screen here as well, so that's why you hear the fan reaction. One, he got the one in, didn't he? And in the college game, you only have to have one in. The one official was standing right by the uh, play. There's the replay screen. That's probably what you have in your house, right? <laughs> yeah, I wish. <laughs> Here's some tip ball intended for Alexander. Tipped in the uh, secondary by Pitts number 47, Brian Guzik. Also on the cover for the Panthers. So Guzik dropping back. We played 14 minutes in this football game, Dave, and it's almost as if neither the Bowling Green offense or the Pittsburgh offense has ever been together. That's right. We'll look at Pat Fleming. This one he gets into. Stein from the 19. Stein with some room and cut down at the 29-yard line. 49 yards on the return. On the punt, rather. On the punt by the Bowling Green punter. So good job by Fleming. And next week on the Big East Network, one of the best quarterbacks in the conference meets maybe the best quarterback in college football. Mike McMahon and the Rutgers Scarlet Knights go for the upset of dynamic Michael Vick and the Virginia Tech Hokies coming off another big win Thursday night. Rutgers in Virginia Tech next Saturday on the Big East Network. Check your local listings. Mr. Vick, 9 of 15. He had the big 63-yard uh, run. That was two weeks ago or last week when we saw him. That's what he did against East Carolina. Determined to throw and makes the connection with Bryant. Bryant didn't drop that one. Thinking back to that big uh, performance last week that we saw in Blacksburg, the one where he shook free, where he was caught in the backfield for a clear sack, kept himself alive and got positive yardage out of it. I had a lot of people say that was probably the best play of the year so far. And the one thing about Thursday night's game, national audience, everybody's talking about the Heisman, very average numbers for Michael Vick. The one thing about it, they put the S in special teams. Unbelievable performance last Thursday night by Virginia Tech. Second down and one at the 38. Barlow's got the first down and more. Fumbled his last time he touched the ball. You know what you can tell about a good football team and how they've been coached defensively. Look at the number of helmets getting to the football. Tim Beckman, the defensive coordinator, has this team playing hard, and that's really all you can ask. That's right. You can't control what talent level you're at. Obviously, this is a Mac school, so, you know, if you're, if you're comparing apples to oranges, certainly they don't match up with a Michigan that, squad. Okay? But the one thing about it, everybody has yeah, the ability to give effort, and that's exactly what you're seeing. He had a good look at Ron Hudson, the offensive line coach for Bowling Green, working with his guys. So first quarter is in the books. 3-3 three, three is the score here. John Terman. Here's a look at the Bowling Green defense. They've done some nice things, and Pittsburgh's defense has held its own as well. Defensive struggle, the offense is still looking for itself here in Bowling Green. Yeah! Four! Yeah. There we go, you're mine. Yeah, you. <laughs> yeah! Sweet. Looks good to me. Tiger may never get into the Olympic Games, but at least he can get into an Olympic edition Regal. Looks like I got the gold. <laughs> now save $1,250 on the Olympic edition Regal for a limited time at your Buick dealer. Hey guys, listen up. Do you want a competitive edge in the gym, at work, even in the bedroom? Want to look and feel great every day? Then you've got to know about men's health. It's packed with information that can change your life. Workout tips that burn away that belly and build loads of muscle. Stress-busting techniques that put you back in charge of your life. And wait until you see what it does for your love life. With Men's Health, she'll forget every other man she's ever met. Let's go to Chicago. Lori? Matt, the response is incredible. 
Women say men who read Men's Health know secrets about driving them wild other guys don't. And right now, Men's Health is making an unbelievable offer. Get a free trial issue plus three guidebooks free. Power Nutrition, Amazing Abs Made Easy, and Drive Women Wild. Guys, you can't afford to miss out on men's health. Call now for your free trial issue. Continue and get a year's worth of sex tips, workout tricks, and nutrition secrets, plus three fabulous guidebooks free. Call now, men's health. Hey, this is tons of useful stuff. Here in Bowling Green, Ohio, the Big East crew, Dave Sims, Jeff Foster, John Sanders and company in a 3-3 game as we start the second quarter. John Terman in his second series, at quarterback for the Panthers. On the 41, Barlow, about four yards, gets across the 45, 46-yard line. Number 44, D.J. Durkin on the uh, tackle. Boy, I tell you what, the offense is no yearbook numbers there, folks. The turnovers, pretty sloppy as we look at the Buick first quarter stats and the penalties, five penalties for 46 yards for Bowling Green. And if you're Bowling Green, you just can't simply afford the penalties. And if you're Pittsburgh, the turnovers is a big number. Second down at six from the 45. Durkin gets back, Terman switching things up. Two-step drop, throw outside, Grimm, about a three-yard pickup. Great coverage by Ken Dobbs, the senior from University Heights, Ohio. And you can see him getting up favoring that ankle. Yeah, he looks like he's going to take it to the sideline, too. He is well under 100%, probably less than 50% effectiveness right now with the pain in that ankle. That's a significant loss for the Pittsburgh Panthers. Lamar Slade, number 86, bottom of your screen. Takes Grimm's place. English is in the slot. Termin to throw again. Left side. Got Bryant. Makes the catch. Good for the first down in the Bowling Green territory at the 45-yard line. What do we have? Another penalty? Goodness gracious. Let me guess, excessive woofing on it. Actually, they should make a penalty, excessive woofing, and make it a 15-yard. I bet that's what this is going to come out to be. It'll be a, probably a personal foul, a taunting or something. It's dead ball. Yep. Yeah, that's what it is. It's excessive woofing. That's what they need to go. They get a sign where you put your hand up around your mouth and go like this. Arf, <laughs> You know what it would be like the uh, University yeah. of Florida, oh, exactly. the Gator, the Gator <laughs> clap. And truly my father's son, because he's always saying, hey man, don't eat a wolf later, play ball. You know, you can talk to everybody after the game. Thank you. Plenty of time. Get phone numbers and everything. And you wonder why coaches like uh, Gary Blackney, you start to see the, uh, oh, the, the remnants of gray hair. That's exactly why. And then he did, you just give up the fight after a while. First and 10 now at the Bowling Green 31. That's six penalties on Bowling Green. Terman looking for a deep ball. Got somebody there. English, touchdown Pittsburgh. <laughs> 31 yards on the connection. Terman to R.J. English. It's his second touchdown of the season. And for Terman, his second TD throw this year. 
And if you're Tim Beckman, we met with him yesterday, trying to put seven, eight people in the box. You see him coming off the slot with a blitz. That means man-to-man -man coverage. Number 24, Ken Dobbs, the cornerback. R.J. English is a big target. We talked to uh, J.D. Bookhart, the offensive coordinator. He says he may be the most complete wide receiver on our team as far as running, catching, and blocking. And that is a big plus. Nick Watts tacks on the point after. So they went for the big play and got it. 31 yards, John Terman hooks up with R.J. English. And Pittsburgh's got a 10-3 lead here at Bowling Green. Hey there, time for a holiday. So switch off your computers and take a national holiday with National Car Rental. Spend some time with National Heroes. Or visit a national treasure. Or join the National Football League. But wherever you go, let National Car Rental get you there fast. With special low rates on minivans for only $229.99 per week nationwide. Or only $289.99 per week in New York. National Car Rental, what are you waiting for? Let's go. I'm Dan Patrick here in the ESPN Radio Chopper. Radio marketing is all about promotions. That's why we're blanketing the country with these ESPN radio bats. We've got live sporting events. We've got call-in shows. You can log on to ESPNRadio.com and find out more about stations in your area. Or you can listen online. So tune in. And if you happen to catch one of these bats, enjoy! Cooling off with the uh, big fog machine there, R.J. English, Pittsburgh, now with a 10-3 lead after his 31-yard TD catch from John Terman here at Bowling Green. Gary Blackney needs his offense to put the key in the ignition. Offense has not been smooth today for Bowling Green. Nick Lott set the kick off for the Panthers. We've got David Bautista. Need to receive. Boston Cows with a 14-10 lead on Army. Short kick. Brought back, nicely covered by Pittsburgh. That was Chris Hainline, number 50. And you talk about the birth. Look, look on the bottom of your screen, number three, Carl Rose. They're coming with a blitz off the boundary corner. That means man-to-man -man with your field corner. Number 24, Ken Dobbs. R.J. English is a big target. Six foot four, 210 pounds, runs a 4-4, the total package. You're asking a lot of a cornerback that doesn't have tremendous speed to cover him in the open field. Folks, as we come out of this break, another flag. There's R.J. Pretty proud of his accomplishment. Asking the uh, BG fans to uh, be quiet. Keep it low. Talking to Pure Force, so there must be another penalty on Bowling Green. These officials have gotten more airtime than Johnny Carson. I'm telling you. That scoring drop here's a holding uh, foul against Bowling Green. A pit scoring drive, six plays, 71 yards, 241 off the clock. Termin English from 31 yards out. And once again, we talk about Bowling Green's offense starting with poor field position. Hey, Sam, let's go! They're going to opt to re-kick this thing. Wow. It'll kick off 
Try to get it up high, get some good coverage, and pin them deep, deeper as opposed to giving them the ball around, I think uh, it was around the 30-yard line. Try to better that. So Nick Lott's going to kick off from the 45. And the one thing you do, you see that they move the ball up 10 yards, and what they're counting on is that Nick Lott will be able to kick it into the end zone. And what does it do for your team? It gives you 10 yards. Well, the last time I checked, 10 yards is a first down, and mm -hmm. sometimes that's hard to come by. That's right. Give all those uh, balanced psyches on the kickoff team another opportunity to go down and unload. Right? And you looked at the penalties. That, Bowling that's... Green with seven. Folks, we've only played 17 minutes. There's Lots. Gets into it very well. Out of the end zone. Nicely done. So they buy their 10 yards. There it is. Pittsburgh looked good on the uh, sixth play, 71-yard drive, taking 247 off the clock. That after a three and out by the Bowling Green offense. English, a 31-yard catch from Terman. There's a look at John Terman. It's a 10-3 Pittsburgh, game two for both of these clubs. Joe Walls. Can't find any running room. Yesterday afternoon, we met with the offensive coordinator from Bowling Green, Tom Lichtenberg. Man has been in coaching for 38 years. And the one thing he said about this squad, he said, we have to be able to run the ball, control the clock, and our quarterback has to make good decisions with the football. Right now, you're 0 for 3. Second down. And 10 after no game. Up the middle, there's a heck of a pop. Great pop inside. Number 15 delivers it. Brian Benneke on Godfrey Lewis. Brian unloads. He's a redshirt sophomore from Youngstown, Ohio. 99 Biggies All Academic Team. And you can certainly see why the defense is the strength of this. The linebacking core. Watch this hit. Beinecke, right place, right time. Oh, man. Another clinic in tackling. Sure was, with his face right in there. Third down eight after that short two-yard game. Saab blitz backside. Beinecke's got him. Down he goes. And Brian Beinecke, two big plays in a row for the Pittsburgh Panthers. And they should get the ball back in this punt exchange in good shape. Paul Rhodes, the Pittsburgh defensive coordinator, said, we're going to bring people from different angles. We're going to zone blitz. That's exactly what you just witnessed. 15 on 15. Back to live action. Stein's got some room. He takes it back. Let's see if he can pick up the wall. Tim, not the fastest guy, but one of the great sure-handed guys in the Big East when it turns comes to returning punts. 51 yards on the punt. About a 10-yard return for Tim Stein. Pitt in good shape again, leading 10-3 here at Bowling Green. Four. Yes. Here we go. You're mine. Yeah, you. <laughs> Wait. That's good to me. Tiger may never get into the Olympic Games, but at least he can get into an Olympic edition Regal. Looks like I got the gold. <laughs> now save $1,250 on the Olympic edition Regal for a limited time at your Buick dealer. You know, when you apply for a loan in today's economy, it's nice to have the confidence that your credit is good, especially when you need a new home, car, or other essential. But sometimes inaccuracies do appear in your credit report. And that's why it's so important to stay on top of your credit by checking your report from time to time. Now it's easy and it's free. To get a free copy of your credit report, simply log on to freecreditreport.com. Act now. Get your free credit report by logging on to freecreditreport.com today.
Back here at Bowling Green, Pittsburgh 10-3, trailing to Pittsburgh. Let's go to John Sanders. And as we know, this Pittsburgh football program is definitely on the move. They're moving to a new stadium, brand new stadium next year after this year at Three Rivers. But part of the move is a brand new training complex. It's called the UPMC Sports Performance Complex, located on the south side. It's a fantastic facility with training rooms, weight rooms, dining rooms, two grass fields, terrific indoor facility. They even had their summer camp there after 14 years at Johnstown. Back to live action, David. All right, thank you, John. And they were going for a big play to Bryant over the middle off of a nice play action by John Terman, but a bad underthrow. Bryant was wide open, Jeff. And it looked like Terman couldn't get his feet settled in the pocket. Yep. He had Bryant open. And you can certainly see why a guy like Walt Harris, who is used to coaching quality quarterbacks and bring him along, he simply said, our two quarterbacks right now should be playing at a higher level. And you can certainly see that. Talking about a difference in... Uh, Field position. BG, Bowling Green starting at their own. They're starting at their own 49-yard line. The score should be much different than it is right now. No doubt about it. Terman again, deep ball. Got a man down there. Bryant. He holds on. 10-5. Touchdown, Pittsburgh. <laughs> 56 yards. On the hookup, Terman to Antonio Bryant. 16 to 3, Pittsburgh. Gary Blackney made one statement yesterday. We're able to stop the running attack from a lot of schools, but we're not able to match up with the skill people. That's what you see. Antonio Bryant in the slot. Folks, there's nothing funny about this one. Well, Number he was three, Carl Rose. And I'm not quite sure. It, it looks like Antonio Bryant has like, see that thing at the back of, I don't know, it's like a, uh, like is that the panther tail or something? He must be the mascot also. Styling. Major League styling. Lots. Another PAT. It's 17-3 Pittsburgh. Antonio Bryant, we saw him last year, prolific freshman pass receiver. He's continuing as a big play guy here in his sophomore year. Touchdown, Pittsburgh. They lead by 14. Gentlemen, a moment of silence in honor of Bob. Bob, a good friend, a good man, whose time had come. Thanks, Bob. <laughs> Thanks, Bob. <laughs> First, get a designated driver. Mm. Next, grab a Miller Lite. It's Miller time. Excuse me, our car broke down. Can anyone give us a ride home? Back later, guys. Oh, uh, yes, thanks. Bye, Bob. slot a simple move one single move beats Carl uh, Carl Rose and the one thing this young man has he has tremendous speed you know we see him catching this touchdown pass earlier it was English well Antonio Bryan dropped when it was a certain score no question about it and you know what that impresses me watching English he was not at full tilt he was running and gliding beautifully Batista from about the five check that Joe Alls Swarmed under. Gusick is there, 47. And half of Western Pennsylvania as well. Cody Miller there, number two, on that tackle on Joe Alls. Now, if you're Bowling Green and their offensive coordinator, Tom Lichtenberg, you may have to change your game plan. They wanted to control the clock. They wanted to be able to run the football. With the score being 17-3, to 
you may have to see uh, the, the, the burden of the offense really rest more heavily on Andy Somm. And the one thing about it, the Pittsburgh defense has not allowed him to become comfortable in the pocket. He's rolling the pocket, he's moving, trying to run for his life. Took some shots last week, he's taking some this afternoon. Here comes a blitz. They pick it up. Sam hangs in, throws, got a man, Bautista to the 33. Nice throw and catch. Be about a yard short of a first down. Threw it a long way across the field, didn't he? Look at this. Far right hash marks. What Sam is basically doing, folks, is throwing the ball about 35 yards across the field. Requires a strong arm. And Batista's been a pleasant surprise for this Bowling Green offense. And they really need it with a guy like Gerling out for at least four weeks. I can't imagine him being back in four weeks with a broken collarbone. Doubtful. Running with the little guy, John Gibson. Inside. Doesn't find a heck of a lot of room there. Penny Semiaya is there. Number 66. And one thing we haven't touched on, Bowling Green's co-captain, Eric Curl, who has not been in the lineup. He broke his foot during the uh, fall workouts. And you're talking about a guy with experience and a guy that, that knows this offense and, you know, comes from, from the bloodline. His dad played professionally. And you miss a guy like this when you have so many young guys up front. Bring a change across for a measurement. It is short by about almost two footballs. That's a give me in golf. <laughs> you wouldn't miss that, would you? No, I've made those. It's just getting there is my problem. <laughs> getting there in, in, not in minimal making, numbers. It's not making the putt. It's what you're putting for. <laughs> That's exactly right. <laughs> You hate to say with nine minutes and 49 seconds to go in the second quarter that this is a must thing. first down, but this is a must make. No question. They gotta have it. Take that big quarterback and quarterback sneaking. Virginia Tech would. <laughs> yeah. That's a tough choice. Eric Clark get a pullback. Bowling Green 0 for 6 on third down situations. Going to throw it to the tight end. They finally got one. It's a completion. Nicely done to Jason Van Dam. Redshirt freshman from Sarnia, Ontario, Canada. Runs a 4'8", 4'9", 40. They look for him to back on some more weight. They like his potential down the road. First down, and, Bowling Green. And what a gutsy call by Tom Lichtenberg, their offensive coordinator. Or what that may tell you, we have no confidence in our running attack or our offensive line. Andy Som out of the pocket. You gotta like a guy with the name Von Don, right? Well, you know what? He's gonna get a benefit of, of the doubt. You know what I'm saying? I wonder, if, he, I wonder <laughs> if he's got a black. I love his movies. I mean, no, number one, straight up the middle. Joe All oh, looked like it was gonna turn out to be the best run of the day for Bowling Green. Winds up with about a three-yard gain. And we got our first glimpse at number 55, Ryan Gonzalez. It's kind of perplexing to me. Young man is one of the top 20 linebackers in the country. He's in the. He's up for the Butkus Award, yet he's not starting for his football team. And we understand that Pure Fourier is a heck of a football player. Why don't you have both of them on the field? Well, that is unusual. Second down, seven from the 46. All first down, Bowling Green. Nice surge by the O-line and by Joe Alls. And you may notice that Bowling Green has changed their center. Uh, John Mazur is the one that started this game. Now number 71, Matt Tyler, a redshirt senior, 6'2", 275 pounds. And now they're enjoying a little bit more push-up field. Easily the best run that Bowling Green has had this afternoon. And you like this young man. He hits the hole with his shoulders square and his, and you know, thing about running backs, you better have pad level. Keep your shoulders down and your head up. Total yards this quarter. That's just the quarter. We're not talking a game. Alls again hammering up the middle. They like, found something they like. Good job by their left guard, Dennis Wendell. Little inside trap. You know, we talk about football. We talk about the Pittsburgh Panthers. Well, they're sharing their complex with the Steelers. Talking about a team looking for some offense. 
Whoa. The Steelers were legendary for those little inside traps. Everybody in Pittsburgh will remember Mike Webster, Steve Corson, John Kolb. What a tremendous football team back in the uh, early, mid, and late 70s. Had a pretty good quarterback, too. Yeah, they did all right. Second down play. Play action this time. Some time. Throw it. And then down the sideline inside the 30. 27-yard line. First down for Bowling Green. Now this is the offense that we thought we were going to see from minute one. And the one thing you see is Tom Lichtenberg, the offensive coordinator, making the most of his personnel, getting his quarterback out of the pocket. They haven't been able to pass protect. Shantae Spencer is fortunate that he didn't hurt his left knee. Watch the end of this replay. Watch his left knee. Ooh. Left knee bent underneath him. That's called flexibility and youth. Tom changing things up. First and 10 from the 30-yard line of Pittsburgh. Changed it to a run right up the middle. And they have found something. That was John Gibson. Corey Humphreys, the free safety, had to come up and make the tackle. They're telling the Pittsburgh secondary, hey, boys, we're coming right at you. Because we're getting through the D-line. The we talked about that short trap. Watch the right guard, Greg Kupke. Get up in the hole. Right there. Kick it out. This is the old Pittsburgh Steeler inside trap. Got the linebacker, Nick Cole, on that play, opening up some room for Gibson. Pittsburgh on the short end. This isn't a baseball score. That's right. Bowling Green, this is rushing yards, but they're getting a little bit more success on this drive. 21 yards on this drive alone. Backside flip. Sound down he goes. Brian Knight came clean. Little stunt on the defensive line, and Brian Knight got a free one. Third sack today for Pittsburgh. Look how wide number 57, Brian Knight, and he uses his athleticism and speed. We talk about the defensive front. You don't hear much about it. Number 57 is the leader for this squad. They'll go out of the shotgun here, third down and 11. Pittsburgh 32. Best looking drive of the afternoon for Bowling Green. Song, time, throw, short, got it. Batista to the 20. Close to the first down. Taryn Gray, number three, covering for Pittsburgh. They got a bad spot from the guys in the striped no jersey. <laughs> you heard the, the immediate reaction by the Bowling Green fans. Dennis Guerrero, the line judge, was the one that spotted this. Take a look at this protection. They run a little thing we used to call an ET, end inside, tackle around, a double ET move. Good job of them zoning it off up front and giving your quarterback time to throw the ball downfield. This is definitely fourth down. Oh, and he's short, too. Half the ball. There's no question what I do on fourth down. Going for it. Malcolm Robinson, right tackle, saying, hey, coach, we got to go for this. They're gathering around. They're huddling on the sideline. And you see Ron Hudson, the offensive line coach. You can tell an offensive line coach because he's got his hat backwards or he's got marker all over his hand. <laughs> That's right. It's, one, it's easy to spot the offensive line coach on the sidelines. That's pretty universal. I tell you what, the O-line is making it happen right now for Bowling Green. They found some soft spots in the Pittsburgh defense, and they're going right at it. Fourth and inches. Sam will take it himself. He's got it. He's inside the 20. Don't say that he's got it. The officials well, still to. have to spot the ball. First down. Red Cashin. Saw Red a couple of weeks ago. Saw him down in, uh, in Tampa. Good search here. And the one thing you have to do, look at the pad level of the offensive line. They got below the Pittsburgh Panther defensive line. What does it result in? A first down. That was an easy call. He's a big kid, so I'm 6'6", 220. Put about 20 pounds on him, he wouldn't be a bad guard. Yeah. I feel a play-action pass here. First and 10 at the 20. Nope, they're going to run it. To the edge. Down the sideline. Nicely done by Godfrey Lewis. What a number starting to mount here, Chip. And what a tremendous block by the left tackle. Number 79, Rob Furman, the most experienced offensive lineman. 
He takes number 58, Ryan Smith, and absolutely pancakes him. And if you're a running back, you're going to find that most experienced lineman. Watch right there. See number 58? Watch what happens. This is called a KO block, folks. Taking him right out of bounds. Good job, Mark. Did everything we give him a ticket. Exactly. About a six-yard ride he took. Time of possession now, 5.32 on this drive for Bowling Green. Second down and four. Bautista at the bottom of your screen. They ran up the middle again. And that time, a better stop by Mike White, number 97 for Pittsburgh. And if you're Bowling Green, you're in four-down territory. You're spotting 14 points, five minutes to go in the second quarter. You've already gone for one fourth down. Field goal is really not going to do you any good right now. 8-6. Once again, the inside trap. Unfortunately, nobody blocks number 97, Mike White. That's a thankless job. Playing defensive tackle, you're oh. getting double teamed. You're in a sumo wrestling match the entire afternoon. That's it. Joe Conlon, check that Dan LeCart, Mike White, in that interior for Pittsburgh. Play action, right into it, Punko in the blitz, what a call. The fourth sack by the Pittsburgh Panthers. Ponco, another one, a clean shot, great defensive call for Pittsburgh. And Paul Rhodes, the defensive coordinator, said yesterday, Mark Ponco is everything you want in a football player, except he's not very fast or athletic. But I tell you what, he's got a nose for the football. He is probably the best success story in, in Pittsburgh Panther history the last 10 years. Ooh. Young man was a red shirt walk on, came in there, earned a starting job. You know who his cousin is? Russ Grimm. Russ Grimm, the offensive line coach for the Redskins. Mike Knapp, 40 yard attempt. That distance, but it is no good. So the Pittsburgh defense has held. Now you talk about a big emotional swing here. Take a look at the Pittsburgh bench. They come out onto the field to greet that defensive unit. Bowling Green's best performance on offense here in the game. But Pittsburgh has held. Knapp's 40-yarder is no good. And Pittsburgh maintains a 17-3 lead. ATT man? Oh, he's our son. Such a good boy. Always let us know where he was by calling us collect with 1-800-CALL-ATT. Even as a baby, he was very smart. He was always on the phone, always calling his sweeties. Quit calling. Call it a job. He was always like, dial down the center. What's up with that? He was obsessed with dialing down the center. C-A-L-L-A-T-T. -T. For the same low rate every minute everywhere, dial 1-800-CALL-ATT for collect calls. Yes. There we go. You're mine. Yeah, you. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> Sweet. Looks good to me. Tiger may never get into the Olympic Games, but at least he can get into an Olympic Edition Regal. Looks like I got the gold. <laughs> the Olympic Edition Regal, a limited release from Buick. New batteries. Autocraft battery cables. AC Delco alternators. Advanced Auto Parts carries more parts than any other store, including one you won't find anywhere else. You know, we can give you a free installation if you like. Sure. Advanced Auto Parts. The best part is our people. Big emotional swing for Pittsburgh. Mark Ponko with a sack, a missed 40-yard field goal. And Pittsburgh in good shape now, 17-3. Let's go down to John Sanders. Plenty of orange down here on the field here at Bowling Green. Of course, brown and orange, their official colors. That came about in 1914. Dr. Williams, who was president of the university, was on a trolley going to Toledo. We'll finish the story after Pitt finishes the play. There we go with Barlow. They keep it on the ground, picks up a couple. John, back to you. The story is that Dr. Williams, who was the president of the university, the first president, was riding that trolley, and sitting in front of him was a woman with a big hat with beautiful brown and orange feathers. He liked it so much, they became the school colors. 
And the second part of the story is that Paul Brown came down here. He liked the brown and orange. Thus, the Cleveland Browns colors are exactly the same. And I know, Jeff, the next time you see the Browns, you'll think of that woman with that big hat and those brown and orange feathers. <laughs> Thank you, John. Short game. Throw over the middle. It's caught for first down. Is that Grimm? I believe it is Latif Grimm. He came back into the game. He's got that ankle retaped, so he's missed the last couple of series, but a big play here. Jeff, you think this is a great opportunity here for Pittsburgh to blow this baby open? I would not be surprised to see in the next couple of plays Walt Harris try to load it up, get his wide receivers behind the secondary, and what do they say? Put this thing to rest. You've got to be impressed with what you've seen from John Turman. He has been impressive. Tight formation here now with Barlow in motion. He's got a small DB on him. They do look for a big play over the middle. They got it. Bryant shoots free. Gets a block. Kicks it to the outside. Maintains his balance. Cuts back into traffic and pays for it. But a first down to the 42-yard line. A 22-yard gain for Pittsburgh. John Terman has looked good today, Jeff. Two touchdown passes, and I think the thing that's probably more impressive, look, hits the receivers right in stride. Antonio Bryant dropped a sure touchdown that he threw the second play of the game that he came in. And you know what? We asked Walt Harris one question. Is there one quarterback, is it Terman or Priestley, that maybe stands out above the other one? He says, only the coach knows. And he's not telling. Well, they got all three speed guys in there. Brian English and Grimm. Terman, seven of nine, a buck 37. Blitz is picked up. Now he's flushed. Now he's got some time. Got running room. And he'll take it right down there. Smart move. But they tried to go deep to break it open. So the story in Pittsburgh, who is going to be the Panther quarterback? And right now, the better performance is being turned in by John Terman. But if you're the football coach, you'll take 10 for 13, uh, 154 yards and two touchdowns, no interceptions every day. That's right. Somebody do it, but he'd like to have just one guy. And this, this guy right here, Walt Harris, has coached some quarterbacks, believe me. Re -re -erected the uh, resurrected the career of Boomer Esiason when he was with the Jets. Sure did. Second down, five, 37 yard line of Bowling Green. New quarterback, Rob Rutherford. He can run it on the option. Showing why he's all WPIAL. Good looking run as he picks up the first down. A little wrinkle there by the Pittsburgh staff. Rob Rutherford, 6'3, 215 pound freshman. He's a lefty out of Perry Traditional Academy. He was the Pennsylvania AP Player of the Year in 98. And the Panthers coaching staff is right beside us. And after Rutherford pulled that football down and made that big gain, there were about three of the coaches clapping. He's going to be an exciting player here before he leaves Pittsburgh. No question about it. Lamar Slade, top of your screen. Grimm at the bottom. First and ten. Terman going to throw. Blitz. Down he goes. Good play inside, Brandon Hicks, number 92. Brandon Hicks is a somewhat unusual defensive nose tackle. Six foot two, 250 pounds, led the team in sacks. And the thing about it, third in tackles, watch how quickly he breaks through. Right there, gets around number 77, Brian Anderson. Well, defensive tackle with a motor. Got to have it. The only way you can play that spot. But look at the hi hands on the hips. That's always the telltale sign that the guy is tired. Mm -hmm. He's got the Dave Sims signature haircut. That's right. Autograph models available. And you know what? The Afro is coming back. Everybody, I'm, out, I'm out of luck, dude. <laughs> everybody that's in their, their, their late 30s, early 40s, mid 40s, they remember the mod squad. Oh, my goodness. And did Link have some hair? Oh, he had some serious hair. And uh, you'd watch Sylvester, that show. Sylvester Stewart, Sly and the Family Stone. Big hair. And you'd watch it and go, hair, let go of that body. <laughs> don't, don't forget, coming up, the National Car Halftime Report. It's coming up in a few minutes. Mike Gleason's got all the inside look at the Miami-Washington matchup. That's a good one. The National Notebook and highlights from the Boston College Army game. I'm surprised that Miami and Washington, of course, they're playing out in, in, in Seattle, uh, that they're only a two-point favorite.
One thing I can tell you about Washington, they've got some huge offensive linemen. Mm-hmm. And quarterback's not bad either. Marcus Tuias is so far. Did you play against his father? Yes, I did. Uh, his father was a good football player. Hard to believe that he uh, generated a quarterback, though. <laughs> Mano Tuiasa Sopo with UCLA. Say that three times fast. Second down, 20 after the sack. They get it outside. Speed guy, Grimm, sideline. It'll be about three yards short, maybe four, of another first down. He did get it out of bounds to stop the clock. With 45 seconds ago, Pitt scored TDs on its last two possessions and going for another. If I'm Walt Harris, when I'm looking at the amount of cushion that Bowling Green is giving them on the corner, I'm going to throw the hitch until they stop it. Walt Harris is certainly not happy with something. Can't be disappointed with how his quarterback has played. Priestley in there early, Terman in there now. Visibly upset about something. If you're Bowling Green, you have to take some chances. You cannot give them a 10-yard cushion. Inside the 20, here comes a blitz. They're looking for it. Slam. One-handed attempt by Grimm. He was in pretty good shape. That wasn't a bad throw. Broken up by number 24, Ken Dobbs. Dobbs has uh, seen the back of his jersey once or twice today. And fourth down and two, and the Pittsburgh staff has not brought on their field goal right unit. The An eligible man downfield by the uh, Pittsburgh hey, offense. Hey, hey. Hey, Folks, if you're just joining us, we had a slew of penalties in the first quarter. They go receiver downfield. Decline, no surprise there. And now we see the field goal unit. So Nick Lotz comes in for a field goal. He's got one today from 36. Last year he was 13 of 17. His long was 39. And this is the angle that a right foot kicker wants. Ball on the left hash. You've got the entire field to kick it into. And that's a big opening. 36 yards in this attempt by Nick Watts. Tim Stein, the holder. Watts got a lot of foot into that one. And accurate, too. So after the Pitt defense does a great job stopping a seven-minute possession by Bowling Green, Pitt comes back and gets three more points on the board with 37 seconds left here in the first half. Walt Harris, boy, you know he had a big hunger to get six on that possession. Didn't quite work out, but he did get three and they lead by 17. Bunch of Pittsburgh Panther fans made the, what is it, two and a half, three hours, a two and a half hour, three and a half hour drive from if Pittsburgh. If I'm driving, it's about two and a half. <laughs> yeah, that's right. If John Sanders is driving, it may be four. <laughs> Don't forget, coming up, the National Car Rental Halftime Report, Mike Gleason will have that for you from our AT&T studios. 20 to three is the score. This game almost mirrors last year's game. Uh, Pittsburgh held to 90-some yards in the uh, first half. Big explosion in the third quarter. They scored 20 points last year to kind of blow this game open and, and eventually went on to win it 30 to 10. 17 points in the second quarter, and right now we're looking at a 20 to 3 Pittsburgh lead. Nick Lotz, busy man today. His last kickoff from midfield after a Bowling Green penalty. Produced a touchback. This one is returnable. Alls has got it from about the 10. Down he goes. After he crosses the 20-yard line. Pretty good kick coverage. Brian Gusick there, along with Mark Muthart. The consummate teacher. Now he has to listen to the officials. I was asking Walt last night. I said, it's got to be tough to make a living depending on the performance of 18, 19, 20-year-old kids. That it is. Look at that, look at that vein in his neck. Talking to R.J. English. Has to be happy after a very slow start by his offense what's happened in the second quarter. They got some folks that can get deep. There's no question about that draw play. And, oh, good tackle. There was some room to run, but Nick Cole ended it. Godfrey Lewis with the carry. 
Clock winding down. Bowling Green, I believe, has one timeout remaining. And they don't look to be in any hurry to get sure the play called. They will get out of Dodge, down by 17. That'll do it for the first half. Very sloppy beginning to this ball game, but some terrific passing. Terman came off the bench. 31-yard TD pass to English. 57-yard pass to Bryant, and that's not to mention the one that Bryant dropped. But if you're Gary Blackney, the head coach for uh, Bowling Green, you have to be encouraged with what your offense did with the seven-minute possession, even though you didn't put points on the board. 17 points here in the second quarter. Watts added a field goal here in the final minute. His second of the afternoon. We will head to our halftime festivities. Mike Gleason will join us with the National Car Rental Halftime Report. Pitt defense really harassing Andy Sam. It's been a long afternoon for the sophomore from Indianapolis. First, the goal for Miami. So Larry Jones, he is at the guard. Touchdown, Miami! Here's Walker, Walker, left side. Walker, two more goals scored. West Virginia has done it. Here's the snap. The kick is away. It, it is good! Boston College wins! Last play of the ball game. To the tight end, Brominski. He got down, go. 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 This kick is in the air. It is good! It is good! One of the greatest wins ever! Let that celebration begin. Hey there. Time for a holiday. So switch off your computers and take a national holiday with National Car Rental. Spend some time with National Heroes. Or visit a national treasure. Or join the National Football League. But wherever you go, let National Car Rental get you there fast. With special low rates on minivans for only $229.99 per week nationwide. Or only $289.99 per week in New York. National Car Rental, what are you waiting for? Let's go. Looking into the bear's eyes, Tom fired. The bear didn't flinch. Welcome to Outdoor Life magazine, where for over 100 years, sportsmen have pursued the big ones, the tough ones, and the sheer enjoyment of the outdoors. Call now and get a full year of Outdoor Life, plus two bonus issues and a free gift for just 84 cents an issue at 79% off the cover price. With thrilling graphics, Outdoor Life brings you the tips, the gear, and the expertise to help you get more game, more fish, more satisfaction. There's also a few laughs, big adventure, and special local coverage. Call now and receive this mossy oak rain jacket to keep you dry when the weather's wet. It's yours free and save 79% on a year of outdoor life. Call now and see what kind of outdoor excitement is waiting for you inside every issue of Outdoor Life. The Sportsman's Authority. Call 1-800-839-7700 to get Outdoor Life plus your free Mossy or Rain Jacket for just $10. That's Welcome back to the National Car Rental Halftime Report, brought to you by National Car Rental. So what are you waiting for? Let's go. The biggest game on the schedule this weekend is top-ranked Nebraska traveling to South Bend, Indiana to battle Notre Dame. This is the first time these schools have met since 1973, when Heisman Trophy winner Johnny Rogers dominated the Irish 40-6, putting a stamp on legendary coach Bob Devaney's magnificent coaching career. The Irish will have to slow down quarterback Eric Crouch, who runs the Nebraska offense to near perfection and massive running back Dan Alexander. Last week, the Huskers rolled up 505 yards on the ground against San Jose State. Heading into this weekend's action, one of the biggest stories is the reemergence of the Pac-10. UCLA's huge upset over Alabama and Southern Cal's domination of Penn State 
The Pac-10 thinks they are back as one of the nation's elite conferences. Surprisingly, both L.A. schools dominated the Rush Cats. Arizona helped out the conference last week by knocking off Utah. If the Wildcats can do the same to Ohio State tonight in Tucson, and Washington can handle Miami in Seattle, then the Pac-10 can make a legitimate claim as one of the nation's top conferences again. Congrats to Lou Holtz, who finally won his first game at South Carolina last Saturday, but very little time to celebrate because his team gets tossed right back into the fire today when they have to face the likes of Quincy Carter and the Georgia Bulldogs. The Gamecocks have dropped 18 straight SEC games. And speaking of the SEC, this weekend marks Tommy Tuberville's first return to Oxford, Mississippi since leaving the Rebels following the 1998 season. Expect a highly charged atmosphere as Deuce McAllister and his Rebel friends look to exact some revenge on their former head coach. It's time now to check out this week's Big East Wire, brought to you by AT&T. In one of the biggest games of the day, fourth-ranked Miami travels all the way to Seattle to battle 15th-ranked Washington. The last time these teams met in 1994, the Huskies made the big plays when they had to and snapped the Hurricanes' 58-game home winning streak. In order for Butch Davis's club to win today, they'll need to get Santana Moss involved early. Last week, Moss racked up over 200 all-purpose yards as his Canes easily defeated McNeese State. This week, Big East fans get a chance to watch Washington quarterback Marcus Tuyosisopo, one of the most exciting players in the Pac-10. The National Car Rental Halftime Report continues to roll on on the other side of this timeout. Helping to realize our brightest hopes for the future. Forging better lives through research. Working creatively to develop human potential. The University of Pittsburgh. The one with Welcome back to the National Car Rental Halftime Report, brought to you by National Car Rental. So, what are you waiting for? Let's go. Pittsburgh Panthers in Bowling Green, Ohio, about 70 miles from Ann Arbor, Michigan. It's now 20 to 3 as well. Harris tries to open up his season 2-0 for the first time since taking over at Pittsburgh. Welcome back to the AT&T Studios. The Boston College traveled to West Point today with hopes of snapping a three-game skid. Now, last week, the Eagles opened up their Big East season, losing to West Virginia by 23 
first half turnovers didn't help their cause. Now, dating back to last year's closer, the Eagles have had four picks returned for touchdowns in their last two games. So today they were hoping the tide would turn. Tom O'Brien just hoping that his team takes care of the football. But this is Army. Josh Holden, far sidelines, cuts back, 22 yards, touchdown. 7-0 Army on top of BC. Now check out William Green on the kickoff, finds the alley, veers to the left side, returns at 85 yards for the touchdown. Well, maybe not. His left foot stepped out of bounds. Maybe it was right foot. But anyway, he stepped out of bounds. Cedric Washington takes it in, though, on the next play. That's the equalizer. Then William Green goes up and over the top for a score. 14-7. Now it's 20-10. Boston College on top of Army. Okay, not far from Pittsburgh, up in Ann Arbor. The Michigan Wolverines taking on the Owls of Rice. Anthony Thomas, the A-train, finds the end zone right after Rice fumbled on the first play of the ball game, 7-0. Check out John Navarre, touchdown. He had four of those last week. That's Marquise Walker. It's 14 to nothing. Anthony Thomas again. This time, 27 yards. This time around the left side. Cuts it back. Boy, he is a tough guy to bring down. Sniffs out the end zone. 21-0 Michigan on top. And then it's Navarre, the redshirt freshman. 6'6", 240 pounds, this guy. It's Walker again. 28-0, first quarter. 28 seconds to go in the first quarter. That's a new Michigan record. 35-0 at halftime right now. Wolverines had 554 yards against Bowling Green last week. They rushed for more yardage than they threw for. That had to make Lloyd Carr small, although John Navarre's debut, pretty impressive. 15 of 19, 265, four touchdowns, and he has a couple more this afternoon. Eighth-ranked Texas, open their season at home against Louisiana Lafayette. That is Chris Sims getting the starting nod. But Lafayette, scoreless ball game, field goal, it's good. Lafayette on top of the Longhorns, 3-0. It gets worse. Lafayette tacks on seven more. The southpaw, Sims, going to the opposite way, throwing against his body. Well, Terrence Hunter steps in front. He returns it for the touchdown, and Lafayette grabbed a 10-0 lead. Longhorns finally got on the board, and Texas has just taken the lead with 10.50 to go before halftime. Eighth-ranked Texas, 14-10 on top of uh, Louisiana, Louisiana Lafayette. Alabama back home trying to ease their pain after losing to UCLA. First offensive possession, they fumble the snap, but maintain the football. Now, same drive, second and nine. Galloway's off to the races. Ahmad Galloway takes it 80 yards, weaving his way through traffic. Cuts back. Nobody's going to stop this guy. 7-0 Bama on top of Vanderbilt. It's 10-7 now. Four and a half minutes to go before halftime there in Tuscaloosa. Last year, Vandy led this one 17-14 after three before falling apart. Alabama needs the victory in the worst way. Marshall, Michigan State in East Lansing. An interesting opener for Bobby Williams. Spartans grab the lead early. This is Ryan Van Dyke going upstairs to Chris Baker. The big tight end lumbers 37 yards for the score. But here's the equalizer and the answer. Byron Leftwich to Nate Poole. This one covers 11 yards and the thundering herd hanging tough in East Lansing. It's halftime right now and they are tied at 10-10. Thundering herd, they've won 26 of 27 and 18 straight. Joe Paterno still looking for the winning formula. Well, against Louisiana Tech, Brian Stallworth to Sean Cangelosi. Penn State down 7-0 early, but then it all changes. John Simon coughs up the football. James Boyd picks it up. He takes it in for the Lions touchdown. That made it 14-7 Penn State. Then it's Eric McCool. Big first half for Mr. McCoo. Breaks to the outside. He's off to the races. 41 yards for the touchdown. 20-7. to And now Rashard Casey rolls to his left. And he throws the strike to Tony Stewart in the end zone. It's 27-7. Now it's 43-7 Penn State. So needless to say, I think those guys woke up. McCool with six minutes to go before the half. Of course, as you can see, only eight minutes to go. He had 132 yards rushing and a couple of touchdowns. Pittsburgh on top of Bowling Green on the Big East game of the week, 20-3. to The National Car Rental Halftime Report continues after this. Here's the goal for Miami. So Larry Jones, he is at the car. Touchdown, Miami! Here's Walker, Walker, left side. Walker, turn to the score. West Virginia has done it. Here's the snap. The kick is away. It, it is good! Play of the ball game to the tight end, Brominski. He got it down. Oh, this kick is in the air. It is good. It is good. One of the greatest wins ever. Well done celebration began. Oh, that was a good game.
100,000 places you can get cash for college. The Coca-Cola Scholarship Foundation, International Brotherhood. 100,000 places you can get cash for college. Our partners, the United Steelworkers Scholarship. Now you can find 100,000 sources of cash for college with the scholarship book, the complete guide to scholarships, grants, loans, and financial assistance. Best of all, this important book is yours risk-free for 30 days. You get names, addresses, and direct access to 100,000 sources of cash for college, often without having to prove financial need or have outstanding grades. We received $10,000 in tuition assistance. We wouldn't have had the money for tuition without the scholarship book. Call 800-892-8899 for the scholarship book, just $26.95. That's 800-892-8899. Satisfaction guaranteed. So at halftime in this battle of the Big East against the MAC Conference, it's Pittsburgh leading Bowling Green by the count of 20 to 3. Hi again, everybody. Dave Sims along with Jeff Bostick. I tell you what, this game started out like it was more an opener than game two. Both teams were very sloppy on the offensive end, but things did turn around for Pittsburgh. They turned it around. Pittsburgh early, blown opportunities with what you would probably capsulize this thing as. Quarterback still going in and out of the lineup. Uh, Priestley got the start. Terman came in. Both were effective. The one thing about this squad we knew going in, they were going to throw the ball, they were going to challenge Bowling Green deep, and that's exactly what happened. No question about it. They've got some game breakers on this Pittsburgh ball club. Take a look at what Antonio Bryant did in the first half. Well, he, he certainly gave up a touchdown right here. Hits him in the hands. We talked about the sluggish start by both offenses, but guess what? It turned around. How do you make good on that? You redeem yourself. You make a touchdown, make a big play for your offense. Terman. L.J. English, big receiver, man-to-man -man coverage. He beats uh, uh, Cobb. And the one thing about it, the one thing that's been persistent all afternoon, the Panthers' defense has been swarming. Both football squads wanted to come into this game and establish the run. There's two words to go with this, bow wow. <laughs> the Panthers was only 15 yards. And if you're bowling green, two yards rushing, simply not getting it done. They wanted to come in and control the clock and keep the receivers in front of them. 0 for 2. Yeah, no question about it. We'll see what develops in the second half. Pittsburgh with the lead, and they have shown the ability to be a little bit more explosive than Bowling Green. Second half coming your way right after this timeout from Bowling Green, Ohio. If your light beer doesn't have this key, you're locked out in a magical place where your tongue can get naughty with the beer of its dreams. Introducing crisp, easy-drinking Bex Light. Okay, DJ, I'm ready for you. What's the game? I'll see Boomerang. Boomerang? <laughs> I think I prefer football. So what are you doing here? I came here for the big, juicy steaks. How about you? I want that shrimp on the barbie. Now ah, let's go eat. They're back. Hey guys, listen up. You want a competitive edge in the gym, at work, even in the bedroom? Want to look and feel great every day? Then you've got to know about men's health. It's packed with information that can change your life. Workout tips that burn away that belly and build loads of muscle. Stress busting techniques that put you back in charge of your life. And wait until you see what it does to your love life. With men's health, she'll forget every other man she's ever met. Let's go to Chicago. Lori? Matt, the response is incredible. 
Women say men who read Men's Health know secrets about driving them wild other guys don't. And right now, Men's Health is making an unbelievable offer. Get a free trial issue plus three guidebooks free. Power Nutrition, Amazing Abs Made Easy, and Drive Women Wild. Guys, you can't afford to miss out on Men's Health. Call now for your free trial issue. Continue and get a year's worth of sex tips, workout tricks, and nutrition secrets, plus three fabulous guidebooks free. Call now, Men's Health. Hey, this is tons of useful stuff. A clear bottle. So you can make sure there's none of that hijinks and funny business going on inside. Introducing crisp, easy-drinking Bex Light. Well, right before we start the second half here at Bowling Green, let's hear from pit coach Walt Harris. Here's John Sanders. We're again, okay? Dave, thank you very much. Coach, talk about the first half a little bit. Uh, your offense started slowly, turned it over a couple times early. Yeah, we had great field position, and our two running backs fumbled the ball, something we hadn't done. We usually don't, don't do that, but uh, unfortunately, uh, good play by Bo uh, Bowling Green. Uh, Fortunately, again, we got some big plays, and, and uh, we're sitting in a pretty good position, but now we've got to finish. Terman played well when he came on. Is he going to start the second half? Uh, yes, he played well, and he is going to start the second half. All right, Walt. Thank Thanks, you. John, thank you very much. Walt Harris, the head coach of the Pittsburgh Panthers. They do have the halftime lead. That's the story from down here. Back to you. All right, John, thank you very much. Nothing but the facts. Jack, Terman's number, 8 for 11, 152, that's coming off the bench, a couple of scores. And an Antonio Bryant touchdown that he dropped. That's right. So you could add about 70 more yards to that, and it'd be 9 for 11. Gary Blackney staying with the shirt and tie as the sun breaks out here in Bowling Green. I wish we had a golf shirt. <laughs> Put that in the next memo. R.J. English deep to receive. We are underway. Fleming gets into it. R.J. will take it at about the one-yard line. Long striding R.J. English finds some room. And boy, the second and third effort draws a crowd as he gets it to the 26-yard line. So Pitt's receivers this afternoon, just the wideouts have been... Uh, getting the job done so far. And these numbers could be better, believe me. Uh, Brian dropped at least a 70-yard touchdown. The one thing that has to impress Walt Harris, his team started off a little bit slow. He has to be impressed with how his quarterbacks have performed this afternoon. Slade is starting the second half. Slot man is grim. They'll run Barlow, see if they can establish him, and he only gets maybe a yard. Kevin did not have a stellar first half. Kevin off a fine performance last week, 106 yards. Yeah. Pit coach Walt Harris wants his, uh, his operation known as wide receiver U. Well, that is not a misnomer, I'll tell you. I bet you if you really ask Walt what he wanted, he wanted to be quarterback U. Yeah. He enjoys working with the quarterbacks. The receivers happen to be a beneficiary of his quarterback's work. But Barla, first half, seven carries, seven yards. Not productive. That'll be the fourth sack of the afternoon for the Bowling Green Fountain Falcons and the second one by Brandon Hicks. Brandon Hicks is trying to equal his number of sacks that he recorded all of 1999. Three sacks for the day. Matter of fact, he did do it there, Jeff. That was his third. My mistake. And the thing about it, once again, a little swim move. Arm over. You know, he's got the moves that you typically will see in the pros. He beat number 71, John Shaw, true freshman. Last week, the offensive lineman of the week for him. Brandon Hicks has been a force this afternoon. They'll rush four. Herman moves. Got some protection. Nowhere to throw this. Now he breaks free. There's a man down there, and it's Grimm. And he couldn't make the catch. And you can see that Latif, I do not believe he's at full strength right now. A little bit of a limp, those last few strides that he took. Now if you're bowling green, do you take your special teams and try and come after their punter? I would. They need some kind of juice here. Fourth down and 16. It is not an automatic first down. If I had a shirt on like uh, Gary Blackney, It'd be it would so be so. <laughs> he is obviously a cool cookie. No question about it, especially being in this coaching profession as long as he has been. 
55 years old, born in Astoria, New York. High snap. They go after him. And I tell you what, not a good kick. Let's see what kind of roll. Gets a great pit roll. Oh, man. Inside the 40 to the 38-yard line. Not one of the better punts by Mr. Lee, but he will take it. Filling it for Jay Junko. Timeout. Come back. BG will have the ball. Watch this. Woo! You know, when you apply for a loan in today's economy, it's nice to have the confidence that your credit is good, especially when you need a new home, car, or other essential. But sometimes inaccuracies do appear in your credit report. And that's why it's so important to stay on top of your credit by checking your report from time to time. Now it's easy and it's free. To get a free copy of your credit report, simply log on to freecreditreport.com. Act now. Get your free credit report by logging on to freecreditreport.com today. Out of cash? I wouldn't dial zero if I were you, stranger. Dial 1-800. Call ATT. And you can save big bucks! All you have to do is dial right down the center. Aim right down the center. What? Hey, hoodie! C-A-L-L-A-T-T. -L -L it's always the same low rate. It's great, right? Ah! Copy. Collect. So call. Sweetie! I did it! For the same low rate, every minute, everywhere. Dial 1-800-CALL-ATT for collect calls. Par, par, birdie. Whoa, par. Hmm, must be a Golf Magazine subscriber. Call now for your free trial issue and learn how to shave three, four, or five strokes off your game. Add 20 yards to your tee shots. Improve your short game. Shoot lower and play the best golf of your life. Call now for your free trial issue of Golf Magazine. If you like it, get 11 more issues, 12 in all for just $19.97. Plus, get this terrific Golf Magazine gear bag free with your paid subscription. Call 1-800-848-9339 now. We're at Dwight L. Perry Stadium, the Black Swamp here at Bowling Green. Walt Harris has Pitt Panthers on the road. At Bowling Green, last time they had the ball late in the second quarter, had their best possession of the afternoon. This time, Joe Alls tries to get out of bounds, and he is knocked out of bounds by the free safety, Corey Humphreys. As we take a look at the Volkswagen, Big East leaders in passing, Pitt Panthers, they were the team with the best passing attack last year. Second time in three years that has happened. And I'm betting that the same thing will happen in the year 2000. But if you're Bowling Green coming up the second half, Dave, you only gained 89 yards of total offense. That long seven-minute drive, they picked up 54 yards. That is a confidence builder. They missed a 40-yard field goal. Seven minutes and change. Joe Walls. Good persistence there. Ryan Smith with the first tackle. He stuck with it. And completed the plays out of Roxborough High School in Philadelphia. And Joe Alls will go to the bench. They bring in Godfrey Lewis. Grounded Falcons indeed. Four yards. Goodness gracious. He gained more yards by uh, accident than he did on purpose. No question. Alexander and Bautista, top of your screen. Bowling Green, one of nine on third ground. Third down. Alls makes the catch. Panko with the tackle. Mark Panko having a great game. He was the leading tackler in the first half. He had five stops and another one for Mark Panko. And that is his third tackle for a loss today. You know, Paul Rhodes said he's everything in a football player except athletic and, and you know, fleet of foot. He shows that he has no problem dragging down number 22, Joe Alls. you got to have a guy like Ponko on your team. He personifies toughness and intelligence. And it seems like he's got a crystal ball because he has been perfectly placed on several occasions. English on the 18. Check that Stein, rather, as he gets it across the 25 to the 27-yard line. Take a break here from Bowling Green. Pittsburgh with its second possession here, second half. They've got a 20 to 3 lead. Hey there. 
Time for a holiday. So switch off your computers and take a national holiday with National Car Rental. Spend some time with National Heroes. Or visit a national treasure. Or join the National Football League. But wherever you go, let National Car Rental get you there fast. With special low rates on minivans for only $229.99 per week nationwide. Or only $289.99 per week in New York. National Car Rental, what are you waiting for? Let's go! Football coming your way. The Big East against the MAC this afternoon. From the 22 yard line, here's Terman. That time, going to take it down and run. And ooh. You see him take a knee. Kerry Campbell came down hard on top of him. Next week of the Big East Network, one of the best quarterbacks in the conference and in the country, and meets maybe the best quarterback in college football. That's Mike McMahon. Scarlet Knights of Rutgers against the dynamic Michael Vick in the Virginia Tech Hokies. They come off a big win Thursday night against East Carolina. How about that block punt, block field goal, punt return for a touchdown, all in one half. I run past you, Kerry, and get here. Didn't even have to call on Mr. Vick to do a lot. Second down and 24 from the 24 rally. And a good stop. On the fullback, Lusaka Polite. That's his first carry today. And earlier in the game, we've talked about Shante Spencer, William Tutu Ferguson, Lusaka Polite. All of these young men went to the same high school. 13 0 last year, got beat in the state championship. You ought to call Woodland Hills just uh, the Pittsburgh Panthers of the West. Grim. Is at the bottom of your screen. You've got Brian in English up top. One setback. That's Polite. Across slant. Bryant falls in the air. And that'll do it. Let's check in with Mike Gleason in our AT&T studios with an update on BC and Army. Well, Dave, BC exploding in the second half, holding on to the three-point lead. Tim Hasselbeck, three picks last week. Here he drops back and finds Diedrich DeWalt right down the middle. This one covers 75 yards for the score. And then they returned an INT for a score. Two plays, two touchdowns for Boston College. It's 34-10 over Army. 14-25 to go. Quarter number three. Dave? All right, Mike. Nothing like having a home run ball. Some good speed there for Boston College. Fourth down and four. Another punt here. Junko. Spiral. And it's caught at the 30-yard line. And nowhere to run. Not a particularly good recovery by Chad Long. And now some extracurriculars. And again, 34 yards on the punt. Beautiful thing about football, boys, is that you can hit people legally. You don't need all that extra nonsense. That's the second time we've seen somebody go after Cox. Kind of easy to be brave after the whistle's blown, isn't it? And you know, you never see the punter involved in this. You know, these guys get off to the sideline. They, they don't want to get involved. Unusual way to try and catch your sure football. Was. And you know what? I'm going to ask one thing. Chad, if you're returning the punt, get up to it. Don't run side to side and let all that pursuit catch you. And look, see, they saw another fight breaking out to the right. Everybody's got to, you know, if you don't get into it, you're going to be a lantern holder. You're going to hold the lamp so you can see the fight. Pittsburgh plays Penn State next week. Remember last year. Tip down. 
Boy, there's an opportunity. Gerald Hayes believes he might have had six if he had held on. And Purifoy hammers uh, Andy Somm after he releases the football. You have to like the toughness of Andy Somm. Six foot six kid, big tall quarterback. Yeah, everybody wants to be a quarterback in Division I football, don't you? Turn it loose. Oh. Hello, my name is number nine, Amir Purifoy. Hope you're having a good day. Psalm, 8 for 16, 85 yards passing. Sun breaking out here at the Black Swamp. Stadium holds about almost 31,000, about half filled. Psalm looks right, throws right, got a receiver, penalty flag, Bautista thrown down immediately. And guess who did it? Mark Ponco with another tackle. And the officials pick up right where they left off from the first half. Another flag on the field. Neither of the coaches can be very happy with the way they're calling an illegal chop block on the wide receiving core from uh, Bowling Green. I think number 12, Aaron Alexander, may be the guilty party once again. The execution has not been real good. The immortal words of John McKay. Coach, what did you think about your team's execution? I'm for it. A legal chop block. One of the great rules in, in uh, all of football. The better one is when an offensive lineman is engaged with the defensive lineman, one of his teammates can't that, cut him. Yeah. That is the number one. It blew out more knees in college and professional football than anything. Oh, man. If you, if you had, a, had a grudge on somebody, set him up, knock him down. And if you've ever had a knee operation, you don't wish it on anybody. That's right. From the spread, second down and 20. Ball's at the 18. Sound to throw. Batista's there. Stops and has three Pitt Panthers ending that play. Pure Foy, Beinecke, and number 27, Tutu Ferguson. And that may be the best ball that Andy Somm has thrown this afternoon. Ball had zip on it. Batista able to, to gather it in. Talked about it in the first half. This Bowling Green offense needs good things to happen to it. Ball's got some zip on it. Tight spiral. They need points on the board, Dave. Sure enough. We haven't seen them test the uh, deep middle at all. Pitt has done it successfully a couple of times. And you've got two true freshmen playing cornerback. That's right. Third down play. Sam, look out. Being chased. Being chased. And down he goes. Another sack for Brian Knight. So Brian Knight with another sack for Pittsburgh. That's his second of the day. He beats the left guard, number 78, Dennis Wendell. Shows the athleticism, shows the foot speed. 57 has really bloomed the last 15, 18 months in his football career. Really wasn't anything special when he came to Pittsburgh as a weak side linebacker. Well, he's played like a special player today. Stein for the 36 with room. Penalty flags all over the place. You saw that one at home. 43 yard punt. On the tackle for the Falcons, number 19. 43 yards on the punt. On the Shante play. Spencer, I believe, is the guilty party on that clip. And this is a very questionable call on the officials' part. You know what? At, at some point, if they continue to throw these flags, they're going to change colors, aren't they? <laughs> Watch the left of your screen. Uh, no harm, no foul. Uh, you have to think at some point. Number three, Carl Rose, the uh, cornerback. Uh, maybe he, uh, he's up for an Academy Award for a, uh, acting in a, in a minor role. <laughs> These flags have been on the field all afternoon. They're going to be grass thing. By the end of the day, they'll be green. Either that or they'll have a after a union card. Pittsburgh being pushed back. When we come back, we'll tell you about their field position. It's not going to be good, that's for sure. Pittsburgh leading by 17. <laughs> It's a new concept in light beer. 103 calories from different walks of life coming together for the sake of the team. Introducing crisp, easy drinking Bet's Light. Touch up paint. 
Bendix brakes, TRW tie rods, Rabbit's foot. Advanced Auto Parts carries more parts than any other store, including one you won't find anywhere else. First driving lesson. Advanced Auto Parts, the best part is our people. Arr, those are the teeth that protect our beer from wussies and place kickers. Introducing crisp, easy drinking Bex Light. Nice day to sit out in the sun here in Bowling Green, Ohio, watching football. 20 to 3, Pittsburgh in the lead right now. Panthers will have the ball starting from their own 26. John Terman still in at quarterback. He's been the most effective and productive quarterback between he and Priestley. English is the man in motion, top of your screen. They're going to throw it. Look out, oh good, saving block. Terman's gonna take it up the middle. Got running room, gets down after picking up the first down at the 39-yard line. Sergio Lund finished him off. Let's go down to John Sanders. You guys both know there's more to Latif Grimm than just football. As a matter of fact, he is poetry in motion at times on a football field, and off the field, he writes his own poetry. We'll show you an example of his life poem right here. You take a look at this, Jeff Bostic, and I'm just wondering, uh, you look at this example of his work, how this compares with some of the limericks that you were authored <laughs> at Clemson and Washington. Uh, John, I'm, I'm speechless. <laughs> Terman swings it outside. Some nice work by Latif Grimm. They get it to Barlow. Turns the corner. Nice gain of about eight yards. Knocked out of bounds by Mitch Hewitt, number 35. Can you imagine if Vince Lombardi had a player that during, that during his spare time, not only wrote the poetry, but showed people, but would come in and tell people, <laughs> you know, hey, coach. how the game has changed. <laughs> We're, we're coaching a different breed of animal now. I got some poetry for you. It's called, it has a nice iambic pentameter, and it has to do with running. <laughs> uh, his big thing were up-downs. Vincent Lombardi. <laughs> Second down in four at the 45. Terman takes it down. Recox throws. Nice catch. First down, Pittsburgh. Far sideline. That's their third tight end, Brennan Carroll. Threw at him earlier in the uh, first couple of possessions. And that's the first ball that the Pittsburgh Panther offense has been, rec you know, able to throw to someone other than a uh, wide receiver. Good job of knowing where you are on the field. Number 23, Brendan Carroll, big tight end. You know you haven't been around a long time when there's a tight end, you're wearing the number 23. No question. No question. Carroll, 6'4", 260 out of midfield mass. Terman's number's not too bad at all. There's play action, steps up, runs again, finds an alley, gets down. He was looking for Bryant to his right, who had one-on-one -on -one coverage with Ken Dobbs. If you're Walt Harris, you can't be real enthused about the way your offensive line has been able to allow Bowling Green to pressure your quarterback, sack your quarterback. One thing that will have to become better during the course of this year, Tom Freeman, their offensive line coach, a lot of work to do in the year 2000. So we go with three wides and two running backs. Slade Grimm is at Terman's far right as we look at total yardage number. All pit, quick hits left side, Bryant. Looks like he's got the first down. Taken down quickly on the far sideline. And the one thing that jumps out at you, Walt Harris said we need one of our quarterbacks to stand up and clearly play better than the other one. Is he possibly making a statement with John Terman? Yes, indeed. I Taking think so. the bulk of the work after the first three series. Good job of tackling in the open field by Mike Malone. Antonio Bryant 
before he leaves Pittsburgh will probably rewrite all the receiving records that the Panthers have ever had. Well, he's got one-on-one -on -one coverage top of the screen. Now they rotate out of it. They look for Bryant. Bryant down the sideline. There he is. He has to wait for it. Makes the catch. Touchdown, Pittsburgh. Antonio Bryant with his second score of the day. 29 yards on the hookup. We talked about the respect that the Bowling Green cornerbacks have. Little pump move right there. A little up and go. Good pass protection. Antonio Bryant gets behind number 30, Mike Malone. Puts it in the end zone for another touchdown. Nick Locks for the point after. He'll get a good look at it. Snappers Kirk Johnson, holders Tim Stein, and Lots bangs it through. So a 29-yard Terman to Bryant hookup. Terman's got three TD passes, two to Bryant, one to English. 27-3 Pittsburgh. Poised in the pocket, a perfect strike. Antonio Bryant with a uh, jumping contest with Mike Malone, comes down with the football, puts it in the end zone. We knew coming in here that the Panther offense was revolving around one thing. Talented wide receivers. We haven't been disappointed this afternoon. Not at all. Brian at 6-2, out jumping the 5-10, Mike Malone. Eight catches for Buck 33, two scores. The one he'll probably, uh, I know Terman will probably <laughs> be all over him about the one that was, what, 70-plus that would have been 6-2. Maybe Pittsburgh has found the quarterback they've been looking for. Terman has really been productive. Six plays, 74 yards. Not a long drive. Very productive. And you would think as a player, Dave, offensive linemen, receivers, running backs, everybody involved, different cadence, different way they throw the football. Everybody in that offense would be much more uh, at ease if you found one guy to be your quarterback. No question. Short kick by Lots. One of the up guys will take it. A lot of hitting going on inside there. And that was taken by Chris Hainline. That's the second time he's been forced to handle the kickoff. I don't think that's what he had on his to-do list today. <laughs> well, he's, got the, he's got the offensive plays on his armband also. All right, you're bowling green. You're down 27 to 3. You haven't really taken too many deep stabs in the middle or deep sidelines. Everything has been a short, you know, 30 yard cross the field to get 15. Total yards this quarter, that pretty much encapsulates everything. What do you do here offensively? Jeff? Right now, you're going to stick with what brought you here. You're going to try and earn respect from Pittsburgh. You know, maybe the game has gotten out of hand score wise, but you don't want to leave here without that respect. Deep ball overthrown. A little wobble on that one as Sam tried to hit David Batista. And the one thing we haven't mentioned, Ramon Walker's not even in the lineup. And I asked uh, the coaching staff yesterday afternoon from Pittsburgh if, in fact, looking ahead to next week, the Penn State game would have been this week, would Walker have played? And they said categorically no. And the one thing you look at this Pittsburgh squad, 2-0 next week, Penn State, can I smell upset? Almost pulled it off last season. That's right. Arrington blocks a field goal. Sam on the move here. Knocked down. Boy, Pittsburgh defense doing a number, huh? Ryan Gonzalez got his hand on that ball. Young man we haven't heard much of. Off to a tremendous start in 1999. Talking about the Penn State game, Gonzalez records 20 tackles, 13 solos. That's unreal. He injures his knee about two weeks later and really was not the same after that point that in 1999. Correct. And now he's splitting time with Purifoy. And that's got to be a frustrating thing if you're a guy like Gonzalez. Everybody is competitive. You see his numbers for 1999. Everyone that's in the uniform is competitive and they want to play. Unfortunately, 11 guys at a time. Sam will work from behind the center. One for 11 on third down. They run the blitz, running for his life, throws it sideline, throws it short, it's picked. Oh, it should have been picked. Oh, man. Tutu Ferguson should have been cruising down the left sideline for a touch. What does pressure do to a quarterback? All afternoon, Andy Saab has been running for his life. The cornerback, Ferguson, 
probably should have, could have, and if he had a better vision in hand, look at him, holding his head, realizing the fact this should have been an interception. This could have gone six the other way. Here's the punt. Stein, fair catch call, 31-yard line. Decent field position for the Pittsburgh Panthers after that 40-yard punt by Fleming. Jeff, go back to 3.45 to go, second quarter. Knapp missed a 40-yard field goal. That ended a drive that had started at the Bowling Green 20. It took seven minutes off the clock with Pittsburgh leading 17-3. Lots tacks on a field goal to make it 20-3 to at the halftime. That might well have been the ball game right there. Well, they're an offense that right now is not clicking on eight cylinders. You know, there's a block that breaks down here. The running back hits the wrong hole. We've got a drop pass. You know, you give up a protection leak, your quarterback is sacked. One thing can stop an offense right now. I think right now, I look for Walt Harris to start using a run game. Priestley is back in at quarterback for Pittsburgh. Now they're going to keep throwing. I mean, he got something going, blew a drop ball. That's a heck of a form tackle. Good job by Hayline. Boy, he really drove R.J. English downfield. Glad you're with us here for Big East football. The caravan today at Dwight Perry Stadium, Bowling Green, Ohio. I'm Dave Sims with Jeff Bostick and John Sanders in our crew. 27 to three, the Pittsburgh Panthers. Best passing game in the Big East the last two out of three years and more of same today. Priestley's first appearance here in the second half. He was looking for something quick. It was well covered by Bowling Green, and he'll have to take the sack. Good look at DJ Durkin. Durkin there after the sack. Pittsburgh Road Openers. 93 was their last road opening win. Look who they played. Ohio State twice, Penn State, Texas, Virginia Tech. Yeah. Sorry, folks. Uh, that's not what you'd call a, uh, a layup by any means. Third down, long. Ball at the 29-yard line. Fake the draw, blitz. Outside throw is there. Nice catch, Grant. First down for Pittsburgh. Ooh, up around the face mask. As Dobbs throw him down, Grimm appealing to the, the official, and I think with just cause. See if they do tack on. That is a first down, no question about it. Gain of 17 for Latif Grimm. Man to man, Ken Dobbs, number 24, the uh, field corner. That's simply too much gap. You're giving too much cushion, too much respect. It was a face mask call that the officials watch. Watch his right hand. Right? Left hand, I'm sorry. There it is, left hand, yes, Clearly sir. a face mask call that was blown. The counter trade, left side. Nick Goins fumbled in the first quarter. Looking for something. Gets about three. Goins fumble. Set up Knapp's 38-yard field goal back in the first quarter for the only score today for Bowling Green. Goings a tough, hard runner. Two-time chairman of the board winner by the coaches for his outstanding winter conditioning. Last week, just three rushes for two yards. But he's a guy that uh, Walt Harris would love to tandem with Barlow to get this running attack going. It's been negative. It has been uh, not effective at all today. I'm going to say negligible, but it's improper use of the word in the sentence I was creating when I was crafting here. Here's Priestley. Home run ball. Got a man down there. It's Bryant. Touchdown Pittsburgh. <laughs> 47 yards. Third TD pass. Now becoming one of the top weapons in the country, the sophomore, Antonio Bryant out of Miami, Florida. And maybe it's people like us, Dave, that are making too big a deal out of the fact that they're using two quarterbacks. The last time I checked, both have been efficient. Pitt rolling now, point after. Nice job by Stein on the poor snap. Lots kicks it through. 
34 to three. Great job of play action, rolling back against the pocket. Antonio Bryan is simply faster than anything the Bowling Green defense has to offer. He's had a huge afternoon. You think, well, this has got to be the biggest day of this young man's career. Last year against Virginia Tech, yes, the Hokies, Antonio Bryant, 13 catches, 215 yards. Folks, you're looking at a bona fide sophomore that will be a superstar before he leaves Pittsburgh. Not a bad afternoon. Nine catches, 180 yards, and three times he's been to the end zone. He's got a lot of double coverage in his future. And he's got a lot of dollars in his future. Stay healthy. This kid's going to be a first-rounder. Because he can get by. I'm telling you, I don't think we've seen him totally at full throttle. He's that smooth and efficient in his running. How would you like to be Walt Harris? Which quarterback are you going with? At this point, if it keeps producing like this, who cares? You know what? The only thing I would make sure, I would have number 80 in the game. That's right. Let whoever wants to throw it to him, just keep 80 on the field. You can throw it deep. Throw the deep middle, the deep outs, let her rip. That was a short kick. Ours taking it. Purifoy on kick coverage. One of the first down there for Pittsburgh. Joined by number two, Cody Miller, and also Lewis Moore, backup linebacker. You see Joe Hall holding his hip. He's got that hip pointer. We got talked the hip about that. pointer from last week. He may have re-aggravated it. Those things hurt too, boy. Thank you. You see him holding his right hip right there, and you can see that big blue pad trying to protect it as much as possible. One thing about a running back, you really can't get enough protection. Every time you carry that football, it's amazing how many people find you. Andy Sam changing things up out of the shotgun. Throwing out batter. And wide receivers, Cleon Gant, his first catch today. Back down, he's a Richard Jr. from Mansfield, Ohio. Let's check in with John Sanders. Little known fact, fellas, this used to be Bowling Green Normal University years ago. And then they changed in 1927. The Falcons became their mascot. This is Freddie and this is Frida. Now, thank you very much. Freddie's been around since 1950. Frida came in 1966. She was actually Mrs. Freddie Falcon for a while, but now she has her own identity. Frida and Freddie, the Falcons here in Bowling Green. Gotta have that alliteration. Where does he get this stuff from? <laughs> There's Sam under pressure. Again, and down he goes. He fights out of it. Good job by Andy Sam Down the left sideline. They knocked the ball out of his hands. Penalty flag on the play. I think there was a couple of late hits out of bounds. Good pursuit by Pittsburgh's number 34, Brandon Williams, to knock the ball out of Psalm's hands. But let's see what this penalty is. Right on the play. Got a dead ball foul. Personal foul, it's against Pittsburgh. And the more you look at a guy like Andy Somm, the more he reminds me of a former West Virginia quarterback, Oakland Raider, New York Giant, Washington Redskin. He looks a little bit like Jeff Hostetler. Long, gangly. Good job right there. I guess that was a personal foul that uh, hit there. Somm out of bounds, a 15-yarder. Ryan Smith almost had a sack, number 58 for Pittsburgh. I'm beginning to wonder if this officiating crew has swallowed their whistle. It seems like after every play, there's a call. Inside the 40 of Pittsburgh, Panthers dominating here in their road opener. Game two for both of these clubs. They bring the blitz. Som, deep ball, sideline, right side. Nobody home. Tried to get it to Joe Fisher, number 85. And it's almost as if Fisher did not see the football. You want to be Andy Som? This is what he's been looking at. Constant pressure all afternoon. Certainly when you're behind 34 to 3, you're having to throw the ball. A ball that probably should have been intercepted by Ferguson. A lot of pressure. You know what? A lot of credit has to go to the uh, Pittsburgh defense also. Trump's a tough kid. He is hanging in. He'll have no problem sleeping this evening either. No, sir. Deep ball sideline in the coverage. Tip at the last second by 2-2 Ferguson, number 27, as they tried to get it to Joe Fisher again. 
Interesting how he got the nickname Tutu. His father wanted him to be a leader, so he compared him to Desmond Tutu. He wants his young son to be a leader. A ball that's really thrown up for grabs. Ferguson shows you a little athleticism. I would say that, that Walt Harris and this Pittsburgh squad are set at cornerback for a couple of years. Yes, sir. Ferguson, a freshman. Dante Spencer is a freshman. Sean Robinson, a redshirt sophomore. Aaron Gray is a sophomore. And they only lose 11 people from this squad. Got a chance to do some good things here. Ross Durham, the man in motion. Somp blitz again under pressure. Throw incomplete. Tried to get it to Gann again. Coverage by Sean Robinson. And you talk about what the Pitt Panthers will be able to do. I am fully convinced that next week's game will be the biggest game Walt Harris and his staff has coached in since he's been there. No question. They're hosting Penn State. It will be the last time that these two schools will meet for some time. Penn State can be had right now, believe me. Well, what does it do for a recruiting war in the state of Pennsylvania, which seems to turn out a few players? <laughs> yes, sir. Quarterback Snyder throwing it down on the fake punt. Pitt was wise to it, but they oh, he knocked it out of his hand. Ferguson knocked it out. What a big play. Carl Rose, the intended receiver. Ricky Schneider, the fifth-year senior, who had punted last week against Michigan, throws a nice ball. It's in the hands of Rose and then knocked out by Ferguson. Nice play. William Tutu Ferguson is showing maturity far beyond his age. I don't think he fooled anybody with the fake punt. Great job of covering man-to-man -man down the sideline. Schneider does a tremendous job of putting this ball up in the air. You got to catch this one. Good job of getting your hand in there and batting it away. And what has Schneider been doing on the sideline to come out there cold and throw a 40-yard bomb? That's a nice-looking throw. Priestley in again for Pittsburgh. First and 10 for the Panthers at their own 39. Keep it in the air and get it to Grimm. Take some punishment as he gets it to the 46-yard line. I wonder if there's any competition between Grimm and Bryant. Oh, yeah, I, I think you don't have to get too far out the way on that one. And they're two different receivers. Understand that. Antonio Bryant is a burner, a guy with pure speed. He's the guy you want running the 8 and 9 routes. A guy like Grimm is more of a 4-5, 4-6 guy. Put him in the slot, precise routes, in and out of them, able to turn and cut on a dime. And they, they complement each other so well. And the thing about it, you add a guy like Lamar Slade, who do you double? And R.J. English. You got three wides right now. Only one football. That's right. <laughs> They'll keep it in the air, short drop. R.J. English, right at first down yardage. As a matter of fact, he's over the 50-yard line. He's got it. And that's a rule that I would like to see change. In college, if the receiver, running back, punt returner, whatever it is, if his knee hits the ground and nobody has touched him, should be the play should still live. No harm, no foul. Get up and run. I think the NCAA would do a big job if they could try and come to some type of agreement that the NFL rules and college rules are you know, somewhat close in what they're trying to interpret. Mm -hmm. Going's the lone setback. Durkin just barely gets back. Long count by Priestley. Out pattern. They get it to Grimm. Picks up about three. It's covered on that play. On the outside by Emmanuel Hendricks out of Pahokee, Florida. On the play for the Falcons, number six, Emmanuel Hendricks. Long quarter about to come to an end in the final 40 seconds here at Bowling Green, Ohio. There have been a lot of footballs in the air this afternoon. Mm -hmm. Subsequently, a very long football game. Amazing to be in this part of the country. As we sit up on top of this stadium, you can see for miles. Oh, it is extraordinarily flat here. Second down and eight at the 48-yard line. Priestley short drop, throw, tip. Opportunity there that went away for Bowling Green. So third down and eight. DJ Durkin got a hand on that ball. And you know, yesterday afternoon, you and I got a nice workout in the weight facility, got a little run in. And we talked about this during the course of our, we called it a jog. We'll, we'll call That's it a, exactly what it was. <laughs> It's amazing to me the type of physical conditioning that it takes for these young men to play college oh, it's football. it's unreal. Folks, it's hot out here. 
RJ English. Now the man in motion. Deeper drop. Priestley hanging in, down he goes. 93, Alex Glances. They were looking to air it out that time. So Glances with the sack. As we are through three quarters. That was the final play of the third quarter. This, folks, has turned into the Antonio Bryant Show. Three scores today, 54 yards, 29 and 47 yards, all the touchdowns. When you apply for a loan in today's economy, it's nice to have the confidence that your credit is good, especially when you need a new home, car, or other essential. But sometimes inaccuracies do appear in your credit report, and that's why it's so important to stay on top of your credit by checking your report from time to time. Now it's easy and it's free. To get a free copy of your credit report, simply log on to freecreditreport.com. Act now. Get your free credit report by logging on to freecreditreport.com today. I'm Phil Mickelson. Everybody can use a good tip. Thanks, Phil. And I give my best tips only in Golf Digest. Golf Digest is the golf magazine. Information on equipment, the best places to play, easy to follow tips, and instruction from the best teachers and players in the game. Call 800-543-6200 and get your first issue risk-free. That's 12 issues for only $19.77, including this handy pocket tips booklet. Call right now and get this instructional video free. I'm telling you, it's the best tip you'll ever get. Yep, you do need some protection from the sun on this hot and humid day here in Bowling Green, Ohio. 31 unanswered points by the Pittsburgh Panthers. And the drastic change. This could be a real gift here for Bowling Green's offense. Kurt Johnson, snap went well over the head of punter Andy Lee. And what a thankless job. If you're Andy Lee back there expecting to uh, have a good snap right there, blowing it over top of their head. If you're a punter, you do one thing, try and recover the football. I thought what we would see, kicking it out of the end zone, taking the safety. Yeah. A lot to be said for that play, too. Even if you miss it, you, you at least make the highlight. That's right. Everybody yeah. can remember that punter yeah. from uh, Tampa Bay back right. in the early 70s. And Neil O'Donohue. Can't remember, believe I remember that. And not much running room for number 27. That's John Godfrey Gibson Lewis. Check that, John Gibson. John Gibson on the carry for Bowling Green. And number 97, Mike White. And this is from a morale standpoint. If you're Bowling Green's offense and the way that you have struggled this afternoon, you desperately need seven points, and you'll take them any way they come.
Hi, everybody. Mike Leeson back here in the AT&T Big East Studios. We apologize for the technical difficulties. We will get you back to the Pittsburgh Bowling Green game in just about two or three minutes. Uh, let's run down some of the action around the country, starting with Boston College and Army uh, playing in the Big East. Boston College trying to snap that three-game losing skid. Well, Tim Hasselbeck, uh, three picks last week. Hasselbeck goes upstairs. This one was out of bounds, so they're not going to count it. They settled for the field goal. Boston College took a 20-10 to 10 lead at halftime. Now Hasselbeck goes right down the middle lets it fly 75 yards to Diedrich DeWalt 27 10 at that juncture hassle back across the middle Keith Hemmings for six more boy Boston College starting to light it up against Army a buck 51 to go quarter number three Boston College on top 48 to 10 over Army BC it looks like they're gonna snap that three game skid dating back to last year right now let's go back to Bowling Green with the Pittsburgh Panthers and the Falcons of Bowling Green Akron will be the next home game. That's not till October 7th. And if you're Gary Blackney, the head coach of the uh, Bowling Green Falcons, you have to wonder who in the world is scheduling my out of conference games. <laughs> Go to the big house and play Michigan. You've got the Pittsburgh Panthers. We talked about. Uh, well, we are back, everybody, to Bowling Green, Ohio. Dave Sims and Jeff Bostick and John Sanders. We apologize for our technical problems. While you were away, Pittsburgh attempted a punt. The snap by Kurt Johnson went over the head of Andy Lee. And then Bowling Green converted on a TD pass from Andy Som to David Batista. And that's how Bowling Green has its 10th point. Other than that, you didn't miss much. That's right. Hopefully you're with us for the Antonio Bryant show. What a spectacular he has put on today. Two TD passes from Terman and one from Priestley. Gary Blackney hasn't rolled up the sleeves. Sam, nice job here. And this is tough for a right-handed quarterback running to his left, having to turn his body. Good job of Priestley getting his feet inbounds. Good touchdown, good throw, good catch, good score. Nice job by the receiver to lay out, make it happen. There we go with Rod Rutherford at quarterback. Gonna take it down and run. My goodness, look at the stride on this young man. Second time he's carried on a keeper. Boy, he moves the chains on that one. Rod Rutherford, 6'3", 215-pound left-handed freshman from Pittsburgh. I'll tell you what, Jeff, you like the way he zipped the ball in practice, too, but look at the, look at the stride. Can't you imagine if he had number seven and was wearing a burgundy jersey? He's going to stay in the game, most likely at a wide receiver here because... And you can see Manginello, the uh, left tackle in there, filling in for Brown. This is when you get some subs in the game, Dave, when the game's a 24-point lead. Yeah. Get him some experience. Priestley's flight to the bottom of your screen. Second down and one, Rock Rutherford at quarterback. Another keeper. Maybe an option? No, sir. Gets the first down. Hey, nothing like getting those feet wet, right? And the thing about confidence. it, he, he brings the ball around the right side of the uh, Pittsburgh offensive line. He delivers the blow. Kerry Campbell, number two, the linebacker. You know what? Normally, you like to drive the uh, opposing running back, and in this case, quarterback, the other direction. Not for Mr. Rutherford. It's not, <laughs> that's not bad. Eight yards a pop. Priestley goes out. So it looks like this is going to be Rutherford's game now. We've also got a new center in there, number 64, Chad Reed. See if he'll put it up. Because obviously he can run. Go option. Nice job going. A lot of running room. Sideline, out of bounds. Got some nice blocking by Chris Curd, a wide receiver, number four downfield. First down for Pittsburgh. And you know what you're doing if you're Walt Harris? You're planning a seed. Oh, yes. Next week, Penn State, you know what? They're going to watch the fourth quarter of this game, and they're going to say, well, this Rutherford kid, uh, I really, I remember uh, recruiting him, but I, I didn't know he was playing that much. And you know what? They, they totally changed their offense. We're going to the option. And if you can continue to do this, well, you're dictating to a defense exactly what's happening during the course That's of right. the game. And you can almost guarantee Bowling Green is not prepared for this option attack. Going to throw it first time. Oh, he's got a man open. 
Nice ball off the hands of Kara. Well delivered by the freshman. That's a good looking throw. There is a penalty flag and it is holding against Pittsburgh. What a tremendous job by the fullback, Ricky Mendenhall, the backup fullback. Bowling Green comes with a blitz. Mendenhall steps it in there and does a great job of securing the middle of the offensive line, allowing his quarterback, Rutherford, to throw it downfield. Rutherford, tall and rangy. Tell you what, he throws a nice ball on a string, too. I mean, there's not too much air on it. Holding call being assessed and taken back against the Pittsburgh offense. I like what Walt Harris is doing, always being known for, you know, quarterback, for, you know, and the one thing about it, do offensive masterminds, do they sleep with one eye open? That's right. Their minds are always going into what, what can we do to confuse the defense? Well, Priestley's back in. Mendenhall and Goings on this first down and 20. Priestley's going to throw. Gets rid of it. Deep middle. Ooh, Ooh is your insurance paid up? Chris Wilson, first time they've thrown at him. They like him. Sergio Lund. Boy, he emptied the tool chest with that hit. Well, if you're Chris Wilson, folks, you have to wonder if you're on speaking terms with Priestley. Oh, you're hanging your tight end out to drive, and you know what? Sergio Lund. That's a safety's biggest dream right there. Mm -hmm. Big tight end coming across the middle, arms above his head. Let's barbecue those ribs. That's what he did. Chris Wilson at 2.30. One delivering a big blow. Goings with the catch. Hainline, Amanda beat. Hainline, good hustle. But a nice gain for Pittsburgh. Nice simple play. Get Goings on a linebacker. And Goings is a guy that... You know, Ohio State transfer, you would expect a lot more from this young man. Big running back, good speed. We saw early in the game he fumbles the football, and that may be what happens. You know what, you do enough things good, but you do just a few things wrong that the coaches really don't have any confidence in you. It's like they're trying to build confidence in each other right now with him getting some play here. Chris Curd, wide receiver, top of your screen. Priestley, time, throws. English has got it. He looks like he's going to be just shy of a first down. Pass complete. But a yard, two yards. And that's what you do with a three wide receiver set. You wind up isolating your slot guy, who, by the way, happens to be the fastest guy on your team. He's being covered by a linebacker. You live for this. RJ English, six foot four, runs a 4'4'40, four, four being covered by a linebacker. It's all about matchups. Got a timeout on the field here at Bowling Green, Ohio. Pittsburgh in control here, 34 to 10. It's new, it's light, but it's not soft. Introducing crisp, easy drinking Bex Light. Yeah? All righty. Looks like a lot more mates are coming by. In the outback, when we have a little dinner get together, we try to make sure it's an experience mates will go away talking about. Outback Steakhouse. No rules, just right. Whose house was this? I don't know. No other weekly financial publication moves the markets like Barron's. It provides the knowledge, insight, and foresight that allow you to stay one step ahead. Subscribe now and you'll also receive this Barron's stock evaluator free. It lets your computer help you turn money into wealth. Get 13 weeks of Barron's and the stock evaluator all for only $39. Call now toll free 800-334-6600. That's 800-334-6600. If your light beer doesn't have this key, you're locked out of a magical place where your tongue can get naughty with the beer of its dreams. Introducing crisp, easy drinking Bex Light. Oh, 
to have started the game at that age. And These you know young what? men have no idea how fortunate they are to be playing golf at that age. And you know what they, they found out? <laughs> Tiger Woods can make a lot of money playing golf. He started when he was three, so why not me? Absolutely. Fourth down and one. English in motion. Priestley at quarterback for Pittsburgh. Priestley throwing and not much of a chance here. Chris Curd. The wideout, a little bit too high from Priestley. Let's take a look at our Beck's Beer game summary. You think the wide receivers haven't had a big day for Pittsburgh? 19 catches, 286 yards, four TDs. John Thurman, he's my starter for the rest of this season. Very impressive, 12 for 17, three touchdown passes. And the one thing we talk about, total yards for Bowling Green. Why don't we talk about pursuit? and being consistently after the quarterback, the Pittsburgh right. defense all over the field. Andy Sum is hanging in. They'll stay with him. Uh, good play by Pittsburgh. As uh, Godfrey Lewis tried to get going and didn't last real long. Claude Harriet, number 90 for Pittsburgh. And Claude Harriet turns into a pretty good player when no one blocks him. <laughs> you know, I found it. It was much easier as a player, if no one blocked me, that I was probably going to make the play. Harriet coming off the uh, left side of the defensive line, making that tackle in the backfield. And if maybe a one, a one yard on that one. Comes a reverse. Got a lot of running room. Ball set up. Batista runs into his own man, wide receiver Joe Fisher. Game of 19. First down, Bowling Green. Shante Spencer with the tackle. He really stacked up uh, Fisher and made the uh, running back Batista on this play. And you wonder where that play was back when the game had meaning. 34 to 10. I don't see bringing that one out of your uh, bag of tricks. It only gives your opponents for the next three weeks something to look at. Pittsburgh rushing four. Some under pressure. Tip almost picked off by David Rout. And Ryan Smith, number 58, the defensive end, breathing down Andy Somm's neck. Gets around number 79, Rob Furman. This Pittsburgh defense and the Bowling Green offense, both sides of the field getting a little bit tired. Excuse me, Rob Furman did not get beat. They had a blocking scheme where they put a running back on the defensive end. And Ryan Smith said, thank you very much. Mismatch, a mismatch. By the way, take a look, when we get a chance, David Rout, number one, is a 6'4 strong safety. There's a ball, out pattern, and it's a completion, Andre Pinchon. Well, David Rout, pretty good story himself. Coverage on that play by Taryn Gray. 13-yard pickup by Bowling Green. There's no quit in this football team. John Sanders touched on it earlier. Look at all the orange. And just for John, I wanted to let him know the buffet line was, was also decorated in a lot of orange. Two big barbecue sandwiches and orange napkins. Completing the color scheme. Get ready to get under 11 minutes. Here in the fourth quarter. Saab, little delay. Alls, a couple of yards, 30-yard line. Good tackle in there by Pittsburgh's number 48, and that is Lewis Moore, backup linebacker. And to touch on what we were speaking of earlier, next week I think will be the biggest game that Walt Harris and his staff have coached in since he's been at Pittsburgh for one reason. Penn State has been the kingpin for a long number of years, all through the 90s. They have an opportunity next Saturday hosting Pitts Pittsburgh, bringing in Penn State. If they can knock these guys off, what it will do for their recruiting with the new facilities will be phenomenal. Yes, it will. Play action. Some throwing. And a nice completion. Good job as he connects with David Bautista. And that is inside. That's a 19 yard game there inside the 10. So it's first and goal for the Falcons. A lot of reserves playing right now for the Pittsburgh defense. And this is only human nature. When you're up by 24 points, your emotional level and your, your intensity go down a little bit. We're seeing some big plays by Andy Somm. 
we don't see the same intensity defensively that Pittsburgh had earlier. Excellent point. Fisher now has to reset. Som waits for him to go wide to Som's left. To bring Pincham in motion. Love that left side, or look right side. And a hard pop put on John Gibson by Shante Spencer. Bowling Green still has their entire starting offensive lineup in the game. No quit in these young men. And the one thing you talk about the Mac, everybody used to say, well, this is a you know, conference that doesn't really play football. Why don't you tell that to Toledo? Why don't you tell that to Marshall? Last look we had, Marshall was leading at Michigan State. Sam in trouble. You could see the rush coming from the outside. Brian Knight just destroyed the guy he was that was on him. I believe it was Rob Herman. Just blew right by him. Brian Knight with another sack. I believe that's his third today. Brian Knight is out of his stance before the left tackle, number 79, Rob Furman, can ever get out of his. The one thing about it is a defender. You know it's a passing situation. The other team is down by 24 points. They're more than likely going to be throwing the football, pin your ears back, and find the quarterback. Good speed by Brian Knight and Ryan Smith. Defensive ends, the starters for Pittsburgh. Here comes a blitz. Blitz coming, screen, nobody there for Pittsburgh. And then finally, it's covered up. But they brought the blitz hard from the safe to secondary. Spencer was flying into the face of Andy Sam. And this is one of the situations where you have the perfect call offensively for what your opponent tries to bring. They're bringing everybody but the kitchen sink. Good job catching the football in the flat and making positive yards. Actually, that pressure was brought by the free safety Corey Humphreys. Spencer made the tackle on Gibson. Crab comes to its feet. They'd love to see a TD here. Fourth and goal at the eight. Play action. Down goes some. He got hammered again. Depleted, in fact. Number 58, Ryan Smith buried him. Too much pressure by the Panthers. Andy Som and Gary Blackby, they have seen it up. Som, not much of a chance on this one. Coming from the backside. Once again, it was number 57, Brian Knight. Whole bunch of sacks here. Pittsburgh's got this one under control. Watch this. Woo! In anticipation of your runaway success as a Wall Street Journal reader, how to blend in with normal people. When in public, walking a pet can help you blend in. A tip on being madly successful from the Wall Street Journal, full of insight on making it big. Subscribe to the journal for just 57 cents a day for 13 weeks, 25% off the regular rate. The Wall Street Journal. Call 800-249-8900. That's 800-249-8900.
Tough afternoon for the Falcons of Bowling Green. 34 to 10, Pittsburgh has dominated here. And that young man had a tough go, as did his quarterback, Andy Sum. They had a look at Malcolm Robinson, one of the offensive linemen. Whole bunch of sacks today by the Pittsburgh Panthers. Ball's at the 17-yard line. Priestley at quarterback. They run Torrey Cox. Picks up a couple. Not a lot of running room there. Knocked down by Casey Williams. And let's take a look at our best play of the game. Brought to you by Advanced Auto Parts. The best part is our people. And it's the Antonio Bryant Show, everybody. Kid Bryant had a career day. Two touchdowns in the first half. Kid's going to be a player. And, and John Sanders, this caramel corn sure is good. <laughs> No gain on that play by Cox. Panthers in no hurry. They take the play clock down to three. Fumble, third of the day. That's recovered by Bowling Green. All over this Chad Long. Torrey Fox at the ball here for the Panthers. Fumble on the play, recovered by number 26. Barlow with the fumble, and we haven't seen much of him since then. Goings with a fumble. Third turnover by Pittsburgh. And that fumble by Cox. And it didn't look like anybody caused this. It thing. didn't. He just dropped he just it. Never dropped got touched. It. Never put it away. And that's a helpless feeling as a running back when you drop the ball, especially after not being hit. Uh, the ball's rambling around, rolling on the ground, and you have no means of bringing it back. And you know when you get to that sideline, boom, Walt Harris is going to meet you, and he's not going to tell you how great you are. Coaches might give you a little bit of slack if somebody knocks it out, but you got to hold back. Try this play again. It hasn't been too successful today. Lewis Moore, number 48, on another tackle. He's played well since coming in off the bench. Lewis, the carrier for Bowling Green. There's a look at Lewis. Lewis Moore, Keep Me Courthouse, New Jersey. Long day for Andy Som. Som looking in the end zone. He's got a man there. Had to wait for it. Let's see. Down to the one-yard line. Batista with the catch. Once again, a perfect example of a ball that's underthrown. The receiver coming back and adjusting to it. Andy Som, the Bowling Green quarterback. Not able to fully follow through with that pass. Batista doing the right thing, coming back to the football. May have had a defender on his back. Good concentration. Taryn Gray got there a little late. Bowling Green with a chance to tack on another touchdown. Sam will take it. And you can hear some of the officials saying, no, no, no. So he's just outside the goal line. Hassan doesn't pick up a lot. Gary Blackney looking on. This is the part of the field where men are distinguished from men. Offensive linemen, defensive linemen. I'm talking about trench warfare, pad level, coming off explosive. This is one of the advantages of having home field advantage in a loud stadium. Obviously, that's not the situation right now. But this is where you find out about offensive and defensive linemen. Lewis in motion. Som. I think the second time he got in, he did. Touchdown, Bowling Green. So Andy Som. Runs for his first touchdown of the season. And as this game is drug on, Dave, you can sense that the intensity by the Pittsburgh Panther defense, offense, and special teams, not where it was early in the game. Bowling Green, the beneficiary of a bad snap on a punt attempt. Once again, the beneficiary of a fumbled ball by Torrin Cox. And the one thing that you're, if you're Walt Harris, these are things you're going to work on next week, and you won't need any motivation heading into a game against Penn State. No, sir. They're going to go for two. 
They'll do it out of the shotgun and reset. Unbalanced line right. High snap. Stop down again. Boy, they have just been all over him. Gerald Hayes got him this time. Been a long afternoon for that offensive unit for Bowling Green. 34-16 the score, Som, with one bright note this afternoon for the Falcons. Hey there, time for a holiday. So switch off your computers and take a national holiday with National Car Rental. Spend some time with National Heroes. Or visit a national treasure. Or join the National Football League. But wherever you go, let National Car Rental get you there fast. With special low rates on minivans for only $229.99 per week nationwide. Or only $289.99 per week in New York. National Car Rental, what are you waiting for? Let's go. New batteries. Liquid wrench. Autocraft battery cables. AC Delco alternators. Advanced Auto Parts carries more parts than any other store, including one you won't find anywhere else. You know, we can give you a free installation if you like. Sure. Advanced Auto Parts. The best part is our people. Thank you. Today's Big East football game is brought to you by Volkswagen. On the road of life, there are passengers and there are drivers. Advanced Auto Parts, the best part is our people. And by Bex, a beer apart. Welcome back, everybody. Andy Saab has had a long, tough afternoon. He just scored a touchdown. For the Bowling Green Falcons, they trail 34 to 16 at the 601 mark here in the fourth quarter. Story today, though, here for the Pittsburgh Panthers, Walt Harrison Company has been the passing game as they try to win their third passing championship in the Big East Conference in the last four years. And what a weapon they have in Antonio Bryant. And they've got the hands team on. Bowling Green with the onside attempt. Well, you can bank on that. Pat Fleming, does it go 10 yards? It does. Let's see who comes up with it. Bob Rutherford, the quarterback, got it for Pittsburgh. The good hands people up front. Good jumping ability by Rutherford. And you notice on the good hands team, no offensive or defensive lineman. Absolutely not. And this is a tremendous kick by Bowling Green. Well done. 10 yards and this big bounce right there is when you want to be able to use the jump ball. This is basketball drills, folks. Sure is. Rutherford's probably played basketball before. Good job, good timing. He's so rewarded they're gonna let him play quarterback. Does he take over for them at quarterback next year? That's a very good question. Terman's a senior, Priestley's a junior. They run straight up the middle. Nothing fancy, Ricky Mendenhall. They'll look to kill lots of clock here. Let's get down to uh, John Sanders. I want to take you guys back a year ago to November the 13th of 1999, and that was when they closed Pitt Stadium with a huge win over Notre Dame, ending three quarters of a century of football. After the celebrating stop, the Bulldozers moved in, and the Peterson Event Center is underway. It will be completed. It will be the new home of the Pitt basketball team. Also, new student housing and a sprawling green space. And as far as my driving is concerned, Jeff, at least I know what exit to get off of when I <laughs> 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 Thanks, John. Rod Rutherford, second down and nine. Nick Goings, good second and third effort, gets it to the 45-yard line of Bowling Green. I don't think there's any question that Walt Harris is going to be pleased with his offensive performance from the passing standpoint. He's not going to be pleased with the rushing. They're going to have to have more out of, of a guy like Goings. They're going to have to have more out of Barlow. And you say, well, they really didn't. They're going to need that against Penn State. Amen. 
43 is going to have to play large next week. Rushing numbers today, not impressive. Passing numbers have been outstanding. And this is a young man you're looking at, Kevin Barlow. So close to being out of this program 18 months ago. Sure enough. Rutherford probably took too much time. And that's the part of a quarterback when you're, you're, you're trying to fill your way on the field, maturing, getting some game time, is learning how to operate the, uh, the game clock. Sure enough, a delay a game. We've talked about the uh, inadequacies in the rushing attack. The Pitt Panthers have generated a grand total of 32 yards rushing. That's not going to do it. Bowling Green, 26. Oof, that'll win today. Priestley in the passing department, 10 of 15, 114 yards and a touchdown. Terman, 12 of 17, 207, three touchdowns. That totals 22 of 32, 321, four touches. That'll work in any league at any time. Third down and nine, Rutherford. Going, trying to bounce it outside, cuts it up. Penalty flag from the secondary comes flying in. Tensions running a little bit thin here. Ricky Mendenhall gets up. Number 37, Nick Goins. Punch and kick and jaw it, folks. And on the stop for the Falcons, number 26, Chad That had Long. to have been the reaction. Number 10, Gary Somebody Fisher. doing him wrong. Flag on the play. And it's a hold against Pittsburgh. That'll back him up again. Walt Harris does not like, nor does any coach, like sloppy play that we're seeing now. Upcoming schedule, we talked about Penn State, then into the conference against Rutgers, Syracuse, on the road, BC. More than likely, we will be at that game at Virginia Tech on the 28th, and then North Carolina, number four, Miami, Temple, and West Virginia. And Walt Harris said one thing yesterday afternoon. The future is now. And he was talking about one thing in specific bowl game. Janko going for a little cough and corner here. Let's see if he gets it. Fair catch made at the 26 yard line by Chad Long. Take a break. Come back. Pittsburgh trying to close this one out. Leading big at Bowling Green. clear bottle so you can make sure there's none of that hijinks and funny business going on inside introducing crisp easy drinking Bex light par par birdie whoa par hmm must be a golf magazine subscriber call now for your free trial issue and learn how to shave three four or five strokes off your game add 20 yards to your tee shots improve your short game shoot lower and play the best golf of your life Call now for your free trial issue of Golf Magazine. If you like it, get 11 more issues, 12 in all for just $19.97. Plus, get this terrific Golf Magazine gear bag free with your paid subscription. Call 1-800-848-9339 now. It's a new concept in light beer. 103 calories from different walks of life, coming together for the sake of the team. Introducing crisp, easy-drinking Bet's Light. David, Bronco number three, Robbie. Corey, are you here? Right here, Colt. In the jam, Cody, let's go! Run first, Robbie. Robbie! Eagle, Eagle! 34-16, Pittsburgh over Bowling Green. 3.52 to go in our ball game. Glad you're with us from Bowling Green, Ohio. Dwight L. Perry Stadium, Andy Sam. Didn't get a lot on that throw. Tried to get it to Joe Fisher. Take a look at some offense here by the Pittsburgh Panthers. R.J. English with a touchdown. Determined. Antonio Bryant, easy rope for six. Determined just hangs it out here. Bryant makes the catch and walks in. Priestley got into the act as well. Bryant 
again, I want to see him maybe next week, see if, when he goes full throttle, because he hasn't really opened it up today. He's that much faster than the folks here at Bowling Green. Outside to Eric Clark for a completion. Rip, rip, rip. There's your quarterback numbers. That is good production by the two men. And the one thing we talk about next week, in my opinion, Terman has certainly distinguished himself this afternoon. Three touchdown passes, 207 yards. Last year against Penn State, 19 for 35, 316 yards, two touchdowns. He gets a start for me next week. I think uh, he may be on to something there. They bring a blitz. Sam got creamed again. Does complete the pass to Andre Pincham. Andy Sam is just getting the way beaten out of him. I don't know if they make an ice bag big enough to cover all the bruises and contusions that this young man's going to have on his body. No doubt about it. They have a body pillow. They could have a body, a body ice bag, right? Yeah. No lie. <laughs> That's tough. I used to play with guys after games would get into 30, 40 gallon buckets up to their waist in ice water. That is seriously cold. And that's called no children. <laughs> that's right, you have to get home soon, right? <laughs> and also talking about down the road. Godfrey Lewis. Yeah, that'll, uh, that'll move things down the road sitting in a bucket of ice. Tell you what, it'll test your intestinal fortitude, though. Man, oh man. You know, both coaching staffs, what they want to do now, get this clock running, get their football teams out of here. You know, if you're Pittsburgh, get back on your bus, head to the airport, get ready for a big week against Penn State. And if you're Bowling Green, try and build on the positive. And that's exactly what Gary Blackney will do. He and his coaching staff will watch the film and take the positive. In Philadelphia, Franklin Field next week for Bowling Green. Snyder, I uh, checked that. Sam rather down the right side, left side line, and there's a penalty flag on the play. Andre Pynchon. Sean Robinson, do you see that defensive? Who was that? One of the defensive uh, coaches on the sideline, running down the sideline. Did you see that, Jeff? It looked like David Blackwell. I'm not quite sure. It's either Blackwell or Paul Rhodes, the defensive coordinator. Boy, I, think he ran about top. I think he ran about 20 yards. David Blackwell. I think it's Blackwell. You see the guy beside him with the goatee. Buddy Morris, the strength coach. And you talk about one of the guys that very seldom, there he is, never talk about this guy. He is one of the premier strength and fitness guys in the country. The University of Pittsburgh should be happy that this guy's on their staff. Guys like Jim Sweeney that played 17 years in the National Football League with the Jets and later with the Pittsburgh Steelers. Guy like Dan Marino, they've contributed a lot of money to their program to build their, their weight room into something that's very special. Buddy Mars, buddy, keep up your good work. The penalty flag, it was against Pittsburgh, and now we've got something else going on here as they official points to the sideline. I think the theme, I think you mentioned it here with 2.18 to go. The theme now is warm up the bus, Gus. Why don't we get Latif Grimm sitting down with John Sanders with a notepad and maybe make him write us a quick poem about the last two minutes and 18 <laughs> seconds of this game. <laughs> There's got to be something in there about, you know, let's hit the bus, Gus. Obviously, you can understand why Terman's got such a big smile on his face this afternoon. Boy, Sam may have let him, left him in for a lot of punishment. More coming his way. He escapes momentarily. And he gets blasted again at the 45. Hey, folks, to get inside the huddle of your favorite Big East team, do yourself a favor, go online at www.bigeast.org for all the football and conference news from around the Big East. Sam, left side. And a completion again to Andre Pynchon. Sean Robinson gambled, went for the knockdown, didn't get it. The other thing we talked about, First down, you know, Vince game. Lombardi and, you know, players that are writing poems. Can you imagine Vince Lombardi with those air mist uh, fans on the sideline? Back in that era, you couldn't even drink water during practice. Yeah, remember that? that? Now, look look at this. This is what the guys that have been, you know, the blood, sweat, and tears all day long. See the Kevin Barlow's down there? Let that cool fan blow on you before you get back in that dressing room and get on the bus. 
Clock at 150. Some throwing and broken up. Batista, the intended receiver. Brian Guzik's made his share of plays today. So Penn State on the horizon next week for the Pittsburgh Panthers. It's at Three River Stadium. But you know that'll be a big crowd. And a lot of people are talking as if Joe Paterno may have had the game passing by. The one thing I can guarantee you, Penn State will not fire Joe Paterno. That's not going to happen. Won't happen. A lot of folks need to get over that. Tom in trouble once again. Takes it down, stays in bounds, and takes the hit from three guys. Fumble, fumble. Who's that coach? Oh, you think this is a two-point ball game? The Blackwell again? He is fired up. He is into it. You gotta like that. David Blackwell, the linebacker coach. Likes working with his guys. We'll take a time out here. We've got 120 to go left in our ball game, and we send it down to our AT&T studios and Mike Leeson. Well, Simsy, BC, and Army, it looks like the Eagles have found the right formula. Tim Hasselback just threw a 75-yard strike. Then he comes across the middle for six more to Keith Hemmings. And Boston College, uh, this one, two seconds to go before he goes in the books. I'm told it just went final. Boston College snaps a three-game skid that dates back to last year. 55-17 over Army. Let's go back to Bowling Green. Thanks, Mike. Boy, BC needed that one. And Tom Penn and the State, fellas. Penn State is on the verge of breaking a five-game skid. They ended the 1999 season losing their last three and two to start this season. Right now? Don't forget, next week, our Big East Network caravan takes us back to Blacksburg, Virginia. Our first look this season at the Rutgers Scarlet Knights, and they get to see the man, Michael Vick. The number nine Virginia Tech Hokies. That's next Saturday at noon. Check your local listing. And they get to see Michael Vick with a 10-day rest period and really coming off a very average game. Didn't need him. Well, you're going to get him. Oh, yeah. You know what? He's going to be on the bus, and he's going to show up at the stadium. Mm-hmm. 119 to go. Third down and four for Bowling Green. Tom under pressure, he takes a blow, throws, ball is dropped. David Batista, I tell you what, you talked about it at the beginning of the program. The poise and stamina, and let's add in, in capital letters, courage of Andy Som, the quarterback for the Bowling Green Falcons. And he comes from, a, he comes from an athletic background, believe me. Young man, uh, you know, stayed in there, he's like a Timex. He takes a ticking and takes a licking and keeps on ticking. And I'm going to tell you, I bet you he's been put on the ground 30 times today. I don't think there's any question. More than his share of knockdowns. Fourth and four. Psalm 19 of 38, a buck 97. Running for his right down. He goes again. Another sack for Ryan Smith. The sack total mounts for the Pittsburgh Panthers. They have just run Bowling Green ragged. Smith, Knight, the defensive ends have had a play day all afternoon. Too much speed. We talked about it at wide receiver. Same thing is true on the defensive line. Ryan Smith, six foot four, 255 pounds. Redshirt sophomore, Brian Knight, a redshirt junior. Both of these guys will be back next year. You can see why there's so much encouragement and excitement about the coming years of Pittsburgh football. That is some tremendous speed. Rutherford back in at quarterback. Dropped the ball, couldn't find it, lost it. BG ball. He said, looks like it from here, let's see. Now they say it's second down, so Rutherford may have recovered, or did recover. There's a young man that's playing a heck of a football right? game, number 58. What's up, Mom? Back in Ryan Smith, the defensive end. Along with his counterpart, Brian Knight, 57 58, wreak havoc. How many sacks we got today? Got to be eight, nine sacks for Pittsburgh? I'll tell you what, the two of them have about six of them. Long count by Rutherford. That should be the last play of the game, Mr. Sure Jones. 
Mr. Mendenhall with the carry. Well, if nothing else, Walt Harris says he may not have uh, totally locked it. I think Terman has a good case of being a starter next week against Penn State. But one thing for sure, Antonio Bryant is a star in the Big East. And the one thing's for sure, Pittsburgh has put themselves in a position to really do something special in the year 2000. Gentlemen, Hosting Penn State, Penn State can be had and really put this Pittsburgh program back where it belongs. All right, our final score from Bowling Green, Ohio, the Pittsburgh Panthers victory is 34 to 16. Don't forget next week in the Big East Network, directors Scarlet Knights visit Michael Vick and the Virginia Tech Hokies. Check your local listings for that game. That's Rutgers and Virginia Tech next week from Blacksburg. For Jeff Bostick and John Sanders, I'm Dave Sims and Mike Gleason back in the studio, the at and studio. Have a good afternoon, everybody. We'll see you next week in Blacksburg here in the Big East Network.